hole and a croc came up and bit the elephant's trunk and it like swung it back and forth and flew it off. I mean, I don't know that it can really hurt an elephant, but it was, <laughs> it was sick. That was really good practice, guys. Great job. All right. Clap it up. Put that animation. <coughs> animation? We're on YouTube. All right. What's going on, people? It is Monday. And look who's back. Mr. Kratz from South Africa. Any war wounds? Did you survive the Lions? <laughs> Any scars? I survived, Any I survived scar the Lions. Better than the Detroit Lions survived, but I survived the Lions. <laughs> All right, give us like your best take, and there it is for the podcast crowd. <laughs> We've nice. got Kratz and all of his furry friends. They look really happy there. Were they that happy in person? Because this is a cartoon, I think. There was no, there was no angry animals. No angry animals. Like... There were some animals that were super skittish and scared, but no angry animals. These lions, they were prowling. They were trying to catch a warthog, which they ended up catching later on. Obviously didn't get video of it. So this was, this was intense to see two female lions, lionesses, is, is, mm. trying to stalk their prey. And like, here's, here comes the other one. And this thing is just creeping, just slowly creeping. And... Mm. It was scary, but the cool one of the coolest things was an elephant stuck its trunk in the water at the watering hole outside of our hotel, and a crocodile, after like five minutes, crocodile came over and chomped its trunk, and the elephant shook twice, and the croc flew off. Like, obviously, he wasn't going to really do anything to an elephant. An elephant would have stomped him if he hung on, but it was it was unbelievable to be in in their in their territory. Well, now you're back in our territory, and guess what, Eric Kratz? There is a current Kansas City Raw, I know you're a former, who is now significantly richer than you and can go on way more safaris than you. Let's charge the damn mound because we have some breaking news. Yes, I'm glad we're all here for this party because this is huge, huge, huge news in Kansas City. Bobby Witt Jr. is signing with the Kansas City Royals an extension that is 11 years, ready for it, $288.7 million. Wow. Just freshly out there seeing the reports flying through, including passing, who I think was first on it. But, whoa. Opt-outs, too. Opt-outs in there, yep. And a club option, so I guess it could be longer than 11. Bobby Witt in Kansas City, basically for life. Or it makes it easier to trade. But not in the beginning. <laughs> no, not in the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> um, Royals are spending money this offseason. Hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Get that new stadium kit. Get that new stadium. That's what they're doing. That is what they're the doing. GM, right? Piccolo, JJ. And he's mm -hmm. like, oh, I don't know about that. But I mean, trust me, the owners aren't that stupid. They know. They know if you have a good team, you have people, players that people like, uh, it is definitely, it definitely helps. Easier to convince politicians to get your stadium going. Plus, I mean, let's go over the player for a moment here. This is one of the bright young stars in our game. Not a lot of lineup protection right now. Hopefully that can improve as this team continues their rebuild. But even this past season, I mean, baseball reference war 4.4, 4, 319 on base, 495 slugging, 276 batting average, 30 homers. 96 driven in, 49 stolen bases, and that was his sophomore campaign in Major League Baseball. He's 23 years old. All right, here's the de – you want the details of the contract? You got more details? Uh, yeah. Contract will allow Witt to opt out after the 7th, 8th, ninth, and 10th years. It also includes an option after the 11th season that would tack on three years and $89 million giving it 14-year, $377 million ceiling. Mm. That's a beautiful thing right there. Let's go. Let's go, all young kids out there. <laughs> Jeez. Let's go. There's some money to be made, boys. Should have you... played shortstop. Yeah. 
Good news, too. We're talking to Robert Murray, who was the one last night who said those talks were starting to heat up again. So mm -hmm. he'll join us coming up in just a few. Todd, Father, I feel like if you were in that situation, no matter what you think, whether you feel like the team is still far away from winning or not, it's tough to turn down that coin. Because I know Bobby Witt was very serious about wanting to be part of a contender. And I'm sure he can look over to someone like Mike Trout and say, hey, I don't want my career to be that playoff list. But at the same time, how are you turning down $300 million when you're 23 and you're going to be with that team at least for the next several years, no matter what? Yeah, and now, like, you think of little things, you know. It's it's something for Kansas City to have their guy. This is, you know, their guy. You know, you got Salvador Perez. I understand he's still that top dog that everybody talks about. Now they got this young up-and-coming, not even up-and-coming. He's been here for a couple of years now, and he's dominant. He's going to have an excellent career. I hope he just goes out there and plays now. Now little things like he could buy a house now and settle down and not worry about where he's renting the next place. Enjoy Kansas City. And then, you know, baseball is just there. Go out there and, you know, he don't have to prove, he could prove himself, but at the same time, he did. He worked his, his tail off to get where he has to be. Now, go out there and just play baseball and be the best version of yourself. And again, congratulations to him. This is so cool. I wish all players can experience something like this. I never did, man. That money is so cool. And now, listen, time to party for him a little bit. Spring training around the corner. <laughs> go out there, enjoy a nice little get together with friends and family. On you, of course, Bobby. And then, Get ready for some baseball. By the way, full no trade also for him. Wow. Full no trade. That's and a, a lot of opt-outs. A lot of opt-outs. Hold on. So wait. Full no trade, and uh, he got a signing bonus. Guess what the signing bonus was? $7.7 7 million. $30 million. $7.7777777 million. So it's all sevens. Because he's number seven, so it was seven million seven hundred seventy-seven thousand seven hundred seventy-seven dollars. That's cute. <laughs> That's cute, right? Yeah. So uh, he's scheduled. If he doesn't, if he opts out, first seven years will pay him one forty-eight. So it's seven one forty-eight guaranteed. Okay. And then the options kick in. So the guarantee for Julio Rodriguez was twelve years, two hundred nine. Two hundred nine. Austin Riley, ten years, two twelve. Because I'm looking at about two years. So of Tatis, service. 14 years, 340. J Rod, 12, 209. Wander Franco, who 11 years, 182. Probably he's not going to see a lot of that. Right. Trout, six years, 144. Corbin Carroll, 8, 111. And Acuna, 8, 100. So he did well. He did amazingly well. Wow. Good for him. Yeah. Good for and him. He also, he doesn't have to opt out. Think about that, Kratz. If he doesn't opt out, like let's say for some reason, Goes through injuries, there's problems, whatever it is, doesn't matter. You are guaranteed 11 years and almost $300 million. I, yeah, I, it's amazing. It's awesome. And KC is a great place to play. But my thing, I love these opt outs. Like everybody talks about, well, you're selling yourself short. He would be coming out as a 30 year old free agent with nine years uh, in the big leagues. So he could get himself another contract. And it's not, it's, to me, it's great for both sides. Like this is, this should show everybody what your team should be doing. So th this is, this is amazing. And you talked about, he doesn't have a lot of lineup protection. He did it last year with not a lot of lineup protection. He's a dude that swings a lot, not a high on base percentage, but he gets stuff done on his own. He is an elite player that is going to give KC a lot of years. And it also gives KC Kind of that clout, too, of like, hey, you want to come here in free agency? Not that they're going to go out and get a $300 million player, but they've signed some really – they've done some really nice things this offseason. What, what's the ceiling for Bobby Witt Jr.? Because I'm looking at some of the little things that I like, too, that I put down on his notes. Like, most two-strike hits in baseball last year was a tie between Bobby Witt Jr. and Bryson Stott. Now, obviously, you see the flashy numbers, the mm -hmm. 30 homer power, the basically 50 stolen bases that he already has been able to pull off. The quality of contact numbers, looking at some of those deeper peripherals in the second half of the season were better. He was working deeper counts in the second half of the season. I mean, he's only two years into his big league career and also didn't have like the best mentors necessarily to look around. It's not like you're looking at ABs every day going, oh, I got to be like that guy. Kansas City hasn't had any offense the last couple of years. They have Sal. That's yeah, it. 
But Sal swings at everything. True. It's true. <laughs> so, so does Bobby. Yeah, he but got I, better. He, though, he got better. He got better as the year went on. That's yeah, he does have much better play discipline than Salvi, and the potential of play discipline is is significantly higher for him. Because yeah. you know, Kratz. I mean, obviously the dude's got pop, but also get on base, and he's at second half the time. Is he Tulowitzki? Is he Troy Tulowitzki? I think he's got more speed. Definitely more speed. I mean, he's like, a top I mean, five speed in the game. I don't think Tulo hit that many homers, did he? Yeah, Tula was like a. Hang on, let me let me look it up. That's that's Colorado, so it doesn't count. No, 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 that counts. I'm I'm not going to play that that. game. But Tula, in his first years, he was 21 when he made it to the big league. Second year, he went 24 dingers, only seven seven bags. But then he went 32, 27, 30. So I mean, I guess you can hate on him for that stuff. But I guess Tula's on base percentage was higher too. But Tula was a guy, and yeah, yeah. Wits, Wits, that kind of player. Like even even when he was drafted, they started talking about his makeup, his just how he was just. It wasn't really a question. Like this is the guy we're going to take one one, and to have it come to fruition and have a you know four and a half WAR season in his second year in the big leagues. This is this is Casey's. I'm not saying it's Casey's window because not really too much has come out of the KC farm system. So. They're going to need to do it a different way, but you can't let this guy go, and they did a great job locking him up. Second overall pick in 2019, because, Todd, Father, we've talked a lot about the Baltimore Orioles over the last Mm -hmm. week with the ownership change and the big Corbin Burns acquisition on Friday. Up until we found out that there was going to be a new rich owner taking over for the Orioles, we thought there was a chance, sadly, Rutschman doesn't play past a few more years with the Orioles, right? You probably look when he's about two or three years away from free agency and have to trade him if you are actually a man of your word and John Angelos essentially saying he wasn't going to re-sign any of those players. I bet you many of those players get re-signed mm-hmm. now, but that's what you're looking at. In 2019, number one pick, Rutschman. Number two pick, Bobby Witt Jr. You want mm-hmm. those teams to be able to keep those players long-term, and that's what we're seeing here. And also, all of these teams can afford to make deals like this. That's very clear. So. Kansas City's had a great offseason. They've added Michael Waka, Seth Lugo, etc. Let's bring in Robert Murray right now to talk us through it a little bit more because he broke the story last night that the extension talks were starting to heat up. Great work, Robert, on that front. Were you surprised that it actually came together this quickly after that? No, I was, I'm not surprised. And hey, thanks guys for having me on. I'm not necessarily surprised it happened this quickly. I'd heard last night that there was some pretty strong momentum toward a deal getting, getting done. Uh, I cushioned it just because you never really know with these kind of deals like of this magnitude, they can drag on quite a bit in negotiations, but I had heard optimism from both sides that a deal would get done and it would make him the highest paid player in Royals franchise history. It ended up getting done today. And now the Royals have their long-term face of the franchise in place. And I think that's going to end up being a really good thing for one, like building the new stadium and getting that deal done. And then two recruiting players to free or in free agency uh, going forward as well. Yeah, I was, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, I was going to ask the same thing. Getting more players to come to Kansas City. You see teams that, um, you know, the Giants to name one. It seems like no, nobody really wants to go there and play there. Now with Kansas City, it seems like now you see people getting paid. You see the new acquisitions they got. It's a nice place to be at. And it looks like you might get some big other names, you know, free agent wise next year and for years to come seeing what they did with Bobby, right? No, absolutely. I think that's going to end up being something that's really valuable for them. And it's, as you said, it's something that a lot of these teams have tried to do, get the big names signed long-term, like the Giants, especially, they've struggled more than any team with that. But now the Royals who have been one of the most aggressive teams this off season, which I got to be real, did not necessarily see that coming uh, at the start of the off season here, but they've added some really nice pieces to the rotation. They've added some good bullpen pieces as well. Um, they've added some pieces to the offense as well, and now they extend Bobby Witt Jr. I think it's a really good time to be a Kansas City Royals fan, and it makes you wonder what else they're going to be able to do maybe this offseason, but just going forward as well, and and especially in that division, which is so winnable. Seeing them trying to go and compete in it, I think, is really refreshing, especially since, I mean, I'm sure we've we've talked about it a bunch on here already, uh, in previous shows, but how inactive the market has been. So this has been like a really nice change of pace and just really refreshing overall. 
What does this do for the Royals' hopes of a new stadium? We, we talked to J.J. Piccolo, their GM, and he kind of was like, we asked him that, and he's like, eh, I don't know about that. But this has got to be encouraging, right, because it shows the owner will spend, not only on wit, but also on, you know, you mentioned some other players, Lugo, Waka, some of the other guys they brought in. So does this give them a better shot of getting a new stadium? Because honestly, I mean, Kansas City is a great stadium. It's a great baseball town. The stadium just kind of in the middle of nowhere along with the football stadium. So they will obviously want to build it downtown. Does this help? This has to help them, right, to get a new baseball stadium? Oh, absolutely. Because now that they have wit extended, like that's going to ensure there's a lot of money coming into the in, into, into that team uh, from a fan perspective. There's going to be teams that are bu- or fans that are buying uh, Whit Mer- or uh, not Whit Merrifield, but Bobby Wood Jr. Um, jerseys. There are going to be people buying tickets. There's going to be people buying all sorts of different stuff. And there's going to be it's you now have that long term face of the franchise, which is a really difficult thing uh, for these teams to get. And now I think that's only going to help them get this new stadium deal done. And I think that's going to end up being something that is a real, like a building block for this team. And it's going to help with that new stadium. It's going to help with the roster construction going forward. I think it's going to be nothing but great things for that, for that city. And I also think too, like it's a really good thing for the player as well. I mean, if you look, he's 23 years old, just ended up getting about a little less than 290 million. That doesn't even include, uh, the three option years on it as well. I mean, that's just, it's an overall, it's a great deal for that team, what they can become for that stadium and for the player. I think it's just a win-win for both sides. And and considering the level of player that he is, it would not even be a surprise if he ends up outplaying that contract as well. He's a, he's a generational player. And that's clearly what the Royals believe with this deal. A lot of these young contracts, you talk about like, the options that are at the end. It's like, oh, you know, three years of options, four years of options. Has there been contracts for young guys like this that have opt-outs, player opt-outs? Or is it because it's normally like the teams get like, hey, you know, they have Andrew McCutcheon signs his deal and he gets to have three team options, that kind of thing. But these opt-outs, is this a new thing? Um. I cannot honestly remember another deal quite like that has opt outs for a young player. Um, I think that would end up being a case where this is a, it would be a rare deal. I don't, I have not personally heard of this deal having opt outs. I've just heard of, um, heard of them having option years at the end of the end of the, end of the contract. But as far as opt outs, that's basically unheard of for a young player and a, a contract quite like this. Um, Cause teams like having those option years at the end of the deal, just cause Obviously, if the team is going to pick up those those options, clearly the player has out like exceeded the contract. Um, so, like I've, if that is indeed included in this deal, then I think that would be one of the first, if not the first, that would have that. Robert, is this a sign to the rest of the Central that hey, the Royals are coming to play now because no one else in the Central is really spending a lot of money. The Twins obviously are getting rid of money. The Guardians never seem to do much. Tigers spend a little bit here and there, but not like they used to under Illich. Mike Illich, the former owner, before he passed away. And the, and the White Sox are just kind of stuck in perpetual rebuild. So is this a sign mm-hmm. that, hey, the Royals are coming, and now guess what? We have money to spend, and we're actually going to spend it? Oh, I, I think that's spot on, AJ. Like I think this is a sign to the division that they're in this very seriously, and Really, like there's no team that's running away with that division. I mean, the Twins obviously have a lot of talent. Uh, they just traded Polanco to the to the Mariners, obviously. They ended up adding a couple more pieces, just agreed to a deal last night with Jay Jackson uh, to bolster their bullpen, which is already really good. So, I mean, there's obviously like the Royals aren't at this point to me, they're not the favorite to win the division, but I think they can be easily competitive. And there's a lot of offseason left, too. Um, so they can continue to try to upgrade this roster. They can, but I do think they're meaningfully better than where they were last year. And considering that they have this long-term piece in place with Bobby Witt Jr., they're going to just, I think it's a sign to the rest of the division and even the American League that the Royals are, are not messing around now and that they can end up being one of these contending teams before too long in the division. But if they continue to add pieces around this roster, then they could even compete uh, for the American League as a whole. And this is this is like the first big building block of it. And I truly, maybe it's not this offseason, maybe it's the deadline, but I don't think they're done. I think they, when you're adding pieces like this, 
you just got to keep your foot on the gas pedal, especially after doing a deal like what you just did with Bobby Witt. Sometimes people don't understand my sarcasm. I know you do, Robert, but how can they be doing this with the uncertainty of all these TV contracts? <laughs> I'll tell you, the amount of times that I've heard that this offseason <laughs> is unbelievable. It's, uh, I mean, it's a real thing for some of these teams, but, but man, like you would think – they'd be able to spend no matter what's going on here. But I mean, Eric, you, like you, you and I talk, I mean, like, I'm curious from your end, like if, when you hear this RSN stuff, does it just drive you nuts or, or what, what goes through your mind? Yeah, it drives me nuts. It, I, I get it. I get it. That is a huge, yeah. that is a huge amount of money that, you know, 60 million, 50 million for some of the lower level teams. That's a huge amount of money, but I also see the amount of money they're getting from national stuff too so that like and and i see what the royals are doing and they are smaller market and they they even compete in their smaller market they compete with the cardinals like a lot of fans in the area become cardinal fans i don't think it's right but you know i'm a a royal guy but it's one of those things that i i am this today with this extension it makes me happy when because when anybody else well we're just not sure of the whole TV deal. What's going to happen here? Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you, this is, it comes back to this for me. If the Royals are spending, then anyone can spend. Cause I mean, they're a team that was not spending much, if at all in previous off seasons. And now they're, it, I mean, they're not up there with, or they're not what the Dodgers spending obviously, but they're like probably top five in spending this off season. So as I said, if there's any team or if, if the Royals are spending, then any team can spend. And really, <laughs> there should be no excuse otherwise. So I want to jump a little gears here. I know this is so cool for Bobby and any player that makes this, but I want to talk a little bit about uh, Lorenzen and Noah Syndergaard, uh, Mike Lorenzen and Syndergaard with their uh, little throwing session they got going on over there you talked about. Why don't you dive deep into that and let us know? No, darn right. I appreciate you asking that. Yeah, they. so Lorenzen and, and Syndergaard threw for teams – about a week or so ago, um, maybe a little bit longer than that. And from what I had heard, both of those guys were really impressed. And Lorenzen drew immediate interest after um, that throwing session. And from everything that I've gathered, his market has begun to heat up. And it's about time because he's, for me, he's one of the more intriguing high upside pitchers on the market, considering obviously he was really good with the Tigers last year. And then he got traded to Philadelphia. And then he threw the no-hitter there. And he was, well, I think he allowed zero runs or maybe one run in the first 17 innings in Philadelphia. And you could see the upside there for sure. He bottomed out and now his free agency is a bit murky. I think he's a really strong candidate for a one-year deal. And if I was a team like, say, the Giants or, say, the, the Red Sox or, say, I mean, a lot of these teams that need starting pitching, I think that would make a ton of sense. And it won't be it won't break the bank either like you're going to be able to get him at a at a probably a pretty good price and if it pans out you can end up having a, a difference making pitcher in the rotation and i think it's a, a gamble that a lot of these teams um should explore and eventually take a, a strong push at and then Noah Syndergaard was not somebody i necessarily had strongly on my radar entering the offseason and then there was immediate buzz that there were some gms that really likes Syndergaard and that believe that he could end up bouncing back after the year that, or the last couple of years that he's had. And everything that I've heard was that he was pretty impressive in that workout. Uh, and he was throwing around the mid nineties consistently. One team that I had heard that was interested was the Pittsburgh pirates. Um, another team that I know John Heyman of the New York post reported was the New York Yankees that were in attendance. There was probably about 13 ish other teams that were in there. And it would not surprise me if Syndergaard ended up getting, um, a contract this year to pitch. And I know, as I said before, there's some GMs that were really intrigued by him. And it seems like that intrigue is continuing to grow after that throwing session. This is just a comment. I don't understand why big league pitchers who have played in the big leagues and ended the season healthy need to throw for scouts. Like this isn't perfect game tryout camp. Like I don't, I don't understand it, but anyway, that's a completely other topic. You were in the Brewers clubhouse in 2018 I was. What do you think about the whole Corbin Burns going to the Orioles? Who who made out the best in this situation and who made the smartest move? 
Boy, I'll tell you that I knew like as soon as I like the first thing that I learned when I was around the Brewers in 2018, 2017 in that range was just how high the Brewers were on Corbin Burns and what they thought his potential was. And then he ended up he was great his first year. He bottomed out his second year. And there was questions about what his long term outlook would look like. And then next year he ended up breaking out. And he's ever since he's been one of the best pitchers in, in the National League. And and there's been buzz for the last year or so that he's probably going to end up getting traded. And it all stemmed right after that arbitration hearing where he even admitted after the fact that the relationship between Burns and the Brewers was fractured. And it probably was not going to end up being repaired. And I did not necessarily expect a trade uh, to be happening now. I thought that was going to end up being a, a trade deadline thing. And it seems like Burns was even – was even thinking that as well. I like as, this was so off my radar. I was so th- this is how I found out about the trade. I was driving. Um, I was going on a, on a date with my girlfriend and all of a sudden I get a call from, from someone who is like, if he calls, usually there's something that's going on. And I answer and he's like, do you hear about the big trade? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he was like, Burns just got traded to the Orioles. And I'm like, no, no shot, no effing shot. Like I, I thought it was, I thought it was not real and obviously it turned out to be real, made some phone calls and it seemed like the Orioles really pushed and had been pushing pretty aggressively recently trying to get Burns or another high end starting pitcher. And it seems like Burns was the one that they really thought was going to be a good fit. And obviously, I mean, hard not to think that because he's, he's one of the, one of the best, if not the best right-handed pitchers in baseball and putting him atop that rotation that includes a lot of talented youngsters. I think that's a really good thing for, for Baltimore and for the Brewers overall, I got a lot of thoughts on this one. Um, you sign Reese Hoskins and then you trade Corbin Burns. That sends a lot of mixed signals here. And it does. I just, it's, I don't, I don't know how they're justifying that. Um, it just, it seems like a really weird move overall. And obviously there's been a lot of different rumors surrounding Devin Williams or Willie Adamas. I know there's been reports about Adamas potentially being available. I still have not gotten that sense quite yet. I don't think he's necessarily available. And at least as of now, they plan on holding on to him. So we'll see what happens there. But I thought the trade was really good for the Orioles. Um, We'll see about their chances of extending Burns going forward, because that's always a tough one with Scott Boris as his agent. So more likely than not, it's actually probably a virtual certainty that he's going to end up hitting the free agent market at the end of the year. Um, for the Brewers, they got a couple good prospects that they think they can build around, and they got a lot of team-friendly control uh, with those two. I I still think they was not a move I would have made. I would have probably ended up waiting until the deadline uh, to see exactly if you can make one one more run at it. I get the fact that they want to they, they wanted to maximize a return for Burns, but if you're going to do that and then sign Hoskins, it just I don't know what the plan is. I'm curious what you guys think on that too. Is that what your girlfriend said? I don't know what the plan is here. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what she said. Yeah, she says that to me more often than not. It seems like a daily thing. Uh, okay, good. She got to she got to know what she signed up for, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so, thank was, goodness she puts up with me. We love that. Okay, that's good. Uh, Eric Kratz's favorite player, unsigned player right now, is Gary Sanchez. You're you're talking about uh, Gary Sanchez getting interest in the Pirates and some other teams. What are you hearing on that? And I know when I did a Pirates game last year, they weren't super duper high on Henry Davis as their long term solution at catcher. He was actually playing the outfield and he was barely catching at all because of his bat and his catching skills were so lax. So, are they going to go into the year? They're clearly not going into the year with Davis as their starter. Is Sanchez a viable option for them? I think he is a very real option for the Pirates. It all here is going to basically depend on price because I think. When it's all said and done, it's going to be around the five million, maybe six million mark for Sanchez, and it's just depending on whether or not the Pirates want to pay that price for him. And I totally get their interest in Sanchez because Henry Davis, like he does not have much experience behind the plate at the major league level, and signing a guy like Sanchez or another veteran would make sense and take some of the some of the load off of his plate and make this take some of the pressure off of him. And I think that'd be a really good thing for him down like, or this year and just going forward. I think that'd be beneficial for him. 
And it seems like, at least with this Sanchez pursuit, that the Pirates think the same thing internally. But if they don't get a Gary Sanchez, I'm really curious to see exactly how the Pirates pivot. Um, do they explore the trade market for somebody else? Do they end up trying to see who else is out there in free agency? That I'm not sure. But I think Sanchez is a is a pretty high priority for the Pirates. And all I know is, is that there's other teams that are involved. And he has a at least one He's apparently has one pretty strong offer on the table. We'll see if he takes that or if the Pirates step up and beat it. But I think Sanchez is is firmly in play with the Pirates for sure. That, that was going to be my question was, do you know the other teams that are involved? Because we, we, we hit this a little bit earlier. We tried to go through the whole league and who needs catching. I think Gary Sanchez is a big league catcher, and if some guys who have signed are getting two-year deals at $12 million, to me, I think Gary's a two-year $18 million type of guy because of the numbers he's put up. Whether or not you think his defense is good, which it has clearly been well chronicled that in New, in New York it was terrible, according to some people, and now mm -hmm. it was elite com according to the numbers. So it's everywhere. Do you have any idea other teams or how much he could be getting? Yeah. I, so as far as the other teams that are involved, I think one, like this is speculation on my end. Cause I, I do not know who has made this supposed offer to Sanchez, but I think the Padres make a lot of sense. Cause I think they, if you look at their catching situation, I think they can end up using another catcher. And then if you look at Blake Snell's numbers with Sanchez behind the plate, I think that's got to intrigue any team that would potentially sign Blake Snell because he was really good with with Sanchez behind the plate and possibly pairing those two together next year and potentially for another season or two has to be an intriguing thought. So maybe those guys have the idea of possibly trying to play together again next year. That's again, that's just my speculation on my end. I have not heard that, but um, it seems like the market for Sanchez is the Pirates and then a few other teams that I am not able to identify quite yet, but try my best. And hopefully the next time I'm on the show, I'm able to, to provide more insight on that one. Need that. We love it. Let me ask you this. So Yankees bullpen search. I, I thought the Yankees had a really good bullpen last year. And I think they're one of the tops in the division or not in division in major league baseball. So for me, they're looking for another bullpen. Uh, why not another starter as well? Yeah, I absolutely do think they should end up getting another starting pitcher. I also think as far as the bullpen search, they were on a lot of these guys. They were on Keenan Middleton. They were on uh, Phil Maton. They were on Ryan Brazier. They were in on a lot of these guys. And the consistent thing that I had heard was that their offers were coming in short uh, compared to what some of these other teams were offering, and they weren't really budging. And I thought Middleton made a whole lot of sense uh, for the Yankees. And I thought that deal was probably going to get done, but the Cardinals ultimately ended up stepping up, offered a more lucrative one-year deal um, than the Yankees did. And Cardinals also included a club option on that as well. So I think the total value on that, if the option is picked up, is going to be two years for 11 million. And the Yankees just weren't willing to go to that level. And it was clear that they wanted to add somebody and they ended up doing that today as far as is the trade for Caleb Ferguson with the Los Angeles Dodgers. And, and that's going to end up being their Wandy Peralta replacement. And I still think the Yankees need to do something more because if you look at their off season, they ended up getting Juan Soto. They got Alex Verdugo. They got Trent Grisham. They've added some other pieces as well, but I still think there's, there's more room for them to, to be aggressive. And I, if you end up getting a Juan Soto, obviously that's a, a really meaningful piece for them. But getting more, I think, is something that should be of, of high priority for that front office. We'll see if they do it. But um, the, the fact that they were being outbid for a lot of these relievers has some questions for me. And I also forgot Marcus Stroman as well. Uh, I, I, I don't know how I forgot about that one. That, one's, that one was a, a really unique situation because I did not think that deal was going to happen. But for the price, I think the Yankees did a really good deal there. It was a really team-friendly deal. Um, but there's still room for them to, to press the gas pedal down a little bit further, I think. Robert, let's finish with this, because you mentioned the Yankees and them acquiring Caleb Ferguson. That happens because the Dodgers need a roster spot open again so they can bring back Ryan Brazier. So that looks like a two-year deal at nine mil. Incentives can take it up 
to $13 million. He was pretty good last year, you know, an 070 ERA. So were you surprised that it had been like, I don't know, a week since the Dodgers did anything? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are, man, I'll tell you, it seems like basically my Twitter mentions this entire off season have been, why is my GM sleeping? And the only GM you could really not say that for was Andrew Friedman. But like the last week or so, I've been starting to get some DMs or some tweets saying, why is Andrew Friedman sleeping? And it's like, he has had a $1 billion off season. And apparently uh, he's still, he's still trying to do his thing. He's, he ended up trading Ferguson to the Yankees. And then now obviously they ended up getting Ryan Brazier back and that, that deal kind of felt like a long time coming because for most of the offseason, I had heard that Brazier wanted to go back to the Dodgers. And and really with the roster that they've constructed, can you blame them? Uh, yeah, obviously, had a lot of success with them last year. Really talented roster, probably the most talented roster in Major League history. Um, that deal was felt like a long time coming. I still don't think the Dodgers are quite done yet because if you look, Clayton Kershaw is still available. And obviously... Kershaw is either going to do one of three things. He's going to go to the Dodgers, he'll go to the Rangers, or he'll retire. And it seems like retirement isn't really something that he's wanting to do at this point. So you would seem to think it'll be the Dodgers or the Rangers. Um, but my guess is he ends up going back to the Dodgers. He'll obviously miss a good, po- a good part of the regular season as he's coming back from the injury that he suffered in the postseason. Um, but I believe it's February 14th. Um, that teams can put players on the 60 day IL. So maybe around that point is when the Dodgers are able to bring back Kershaw. That's just my speculation, but I think that at least would make a lot of sense. There you go, Robert. Hey, great stuff, man. Great to catch up with you. Appreciate the time. That was like the most, one of the most timely Mm -hmm. guest appearances ever with your breaking of the Bobby Wittick Jr. extension talks and then all of that kind of coming to fruition. Uh, You can follow Robert at by Robert Murray and check out all of his work and fan side at his weekly show as well. Robert, great to talk to you as always, man. Appreciate it. Keep up the great work. Hey, back at you guys. Always a pleasure. Uh, thank you guys for having me on. And Kratz or Eric, uh, go birds, baby. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs> yeah, enjoy the Super Bowl, oh, yeah. Robert. Go birds. Enjoy the Super thank Bowl. Thank you. Boo to birds, Cheers, Robert. Oh, my God. We'll talk to uh, you soon, bud. <laughs> hey, I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, check out Robert's work in fan sided. And also, by the way, it's a pretty big week in Kansas City. Now it's a bigger week in Kansas City. They got to they got to put him out there like he's got to go to the Super Bowl too now oh, yeah. on the sideline something. I agree. I agree. He's got to I mean he's already buddies with Mahomes but now he can kind of It's not that easy to get on the NFL sidelines especially for the Super Bowl. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. It's, it's it's like for the game pre-game, yeah. Yeah, I agree. But pre-game. During the game it's like next to impossible to be on the sidelines for an NFL game. Bobby can text Mr. Mahomes. But Mahomes now, doesn't have it's all NFL driven. No, I know. I'm just saying he can text him and say, dude, I can keep up with you at dinner now. Like you don't have to take all True. the bills. True. No, right? no, no. Does no. he ever get no, the Pat's chance? Pat's still paying. Really? Pat's still paying. Pat actually <laughs> just paid him because he's a partial owner of the Royals, Pat, isn't he? I love that name. Doesn't he have like a super small share of the does, Royals? I think I think he does. Okay. I think he does. But no, he's still shoot. He still looks down on Bobby's contract. He's like, hey, cool. That that's a cool try. Hmm. <laughs> You can pay yeah, the tip. Called... He'll tell him, pay the tip. <laughs> that's my endorsement deal money. But that's cute. Good job, kid. Keep it yeah. up. Uh, all right, let's swing back to Dodgers, though. So, yeah, they do sign Ryan Brazier, who was awesome for them last year. So he was cut by the Red Sox, goes to the Dodgers, and they are like, dude, new cutter, what do you think? It worked. 070 ERA. And like Robert mentioned, he wanted to go back. He's back for two years with the incentives here that can take it up to $13 million. That's what you know enabled them to make that Caleb Ferguson deal. Obviously a, a bit of a roster crunch when the Dodgers have just super dudes everywhere. So they also had Dodger Fest this past weekend. Would you like to get to some of the comments that were recited at Dodger Fest? Sure. <laughs> Did, but before we get to it, though, I know you're going to show the Mookie comment, but the mm-hmm. – the picture with Shohei's arm, everyone was like freaking out about the scar. Has no one ever seen a Tommy John scar before? Yeah, that's what not, it looks like. That's exactly what it looks million like. Million people. And there was nothing like he's just he. That's who he is. Like if like if LeBron James gets a normal baseball surgery, people are gonna freak out about it. Before we head to the comments by Mookie Brazier, you have to remember too. Back in twenty one, he got hit in the head coming back from a rehab assignment. That stuff doesn't like you don't just like. 
oh, well, I'll just come back and everything is going to be fine. He got hit on a, by a line drive in the side of the head, and he dealt with some issues trying to come back from that. And, you know, to be able to find a place where he's comfortable, obviously everyone's going to say, well, everybody wants to play for the Dodgers, but – He's comfortable in L.A. He had success, success that he had when they won the World Series. Just another great piece. Yeah, you're right. Um, there were a ton of interesting comments. We'll start with the one that got the most headlines. So Mookie Betts addressing the crowd and addressing what the Dodgers are going to bring to the table for every opponent this season. I mean, every, every game is going to be the other team's World Series. I mean, it is what it is. It's what we signed up for, you know. I mean, every every game is going to be the other team's World Series. I mean, it is what it is. It's what we signed up for, you know. And yeah. so He only said it once, by the way. We're just playing it on repeat because I think some clubhouses might do that. You know how there'll be the video room in some of the clubhouses or next to the clubhouse, and they'll be playing stuff on a loop? Have you ever seen that where they'll play, like, the starting pitchers pitches on a loop. You ever seen those videos that you yep. pass by and you're not really supposed to look, but you just give it a little peek and say, ah, I know your game plan now. Um, but anyway, don't you think they're going to play that on a loop? And obviously there it is. Why? The quote. Why are you going to play that on a loop? Some people, some people, obviously the, the Dodger haters out there are like, Oh, you can't say that. Some people I saw on X Twitter, people were like, well, I guess Mookie's not getting a hit all year. Did you see like, cause they were making fun of him for last postseason yeah. where he went like, him and Freddie went like one for 22 or whatever. I'll take them on my team then. I know. I Listen, I will too, but it was just funny how people yeah. were like, well, I guess you ain't getting a hit all year then. If it's the World Series. I mean, just people are crazy. Would this piss you off? All right, we got, let's go down He's the player, right. the player right. lineup. Listen when, I, listen, when I played against the Yankees for all those years, guess what? Every time you played them, it was a big – when you're facing, you know, Jeter, Clemens, Pettit, Mariano, Bernie, Posada, you're like – I better bring it or they're going to whoop our asses. So, yeah, this is exactly what he's saying. The Braves have the same way. People are going to get up for the Braves, the Phillies. I mean, it, it doesn't change. He's not wrong. Change. I don't no. think he's wrong at all. I think he's 100% right. It's not like it's not like he attacked a certain fan base. No, I remember no. Back in, back in like 07, Jimmy Rollins was like, well, the NL East goes through Philly now, not through New York. Like he attacked and he got booed in New York for the rest of his career. But Mookie wasn't – he wasn't attacking any fan base. He wasn't being snarky about it. He's exactly right. Now, it's not – they're not the World Series like, oh, you know, slam dunk, they're going to definitely win it. But they clearly have done stuff that is going to make everybody think exactly what AJ just said. They, they need pitching still, though. That- Marco Bueller's not going to start the year healthy. I and mean, right now it's Glasnow, Yamamoto, Miller – James Paxton, if he's healthy, and she and her stone until Bueller, but we'll see. Glasnow hasn't made it, but pitched more than 130 innings in his career, right? Yamamoto's new. Paxton pitch- definitely has an injury history, right? Bueller's been out for a long time. This isn't like a this isn't like a dream's dream of a rotation here to start the year for Dave Roberts and the in the Dodgers. The upside is a dream. The, the upside is if they can keep them all healthy and keep them out there, but. You know, we're, we're you know we're only listing five, but Yamamoto's a guy that probably needs a six man rotation too. They got to find another guy. Who's the anchor? Who's the anchor of this staff? Like you, you paid a lot to Yamamoto. Who's the anchor? Are you looking at Miller? Like, hey, you know, you have the least. Uh, oh wait, no, you were just up from the minor leagues. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. There's a lot of there's some question marks in there. Even if they bring back Kershaw, he's not ready right away. I mean, there's a lot of question marks in there. Their bullpen's going to be good again. But yeah. their starters are going to be very, very questionable. And there's going to be a lot of pressure on this team. Pressure is a privilege, as you guys know. Mm-hmm. And pressure, when you have pressure going into the year, that means you're supposed to be good. And you want that as a player. I always wanted, man, if I went into a year and the, and the paper's like, man, this is the last place team, like, this is going to be a shitty year. You went into the season, you're like, oh, man, we got a chance to win. You're like, all right, let's <laughs> go, boys. Right? I mean, man, it it's just one of those things. Like, I wanted, I wanted this as a player to be like, everyone bring it. I mean, bring it on. Like, we're supposed to be good. Let's go. Let's prove them right. And if it doesn't work out, it didn't work out. But it's much better to be in that situation than be on a team going to the year going, man, if this team doesn't lose 100 games, it'll be a miracle. <laughs> well, let, let me ask you this, Todd Father. So let's say you're playing against the Dodgers this coming season. Like AJ mentioned, you're going to kind of play up and be like, let's go. We're going against the big boys right here because mm-hmm. you got to play up to this kind of competition. Do you think teams will literally play better? against the Dodgers this coming season because they do have the number one target on their back 
I would say more than any other team in baseball right now because of what they just did this offseason. Like, will they get every opponent's best better than they would in the past? Or is that not really a thing in baseball? No, I, I think the expectations of whatever, say like the Pirates come in and they're playing the Dodgers. Now you, your expectations are a little higher. I mean, it's, I think they're going to get everybody's best. Yeah. And they come in LA, they're going to try and stomp on you just like LA is going to try and hold them off. So I do, I was one of those guys, you know, when you face a team, a winning team that's got a best, you know, I should say a better record than most. I wanted to show them, dog, hey, listen, we're here to play too. So I think they're going to get everybody's best. I think they're going to have to battle their tails off. I think they're going to be a really good team. I think they're going to win over 100 wins, and I think they're going to do just fine. But still, I think every team that comes to play them or wherever they go, it's going to be a packed house. It's going to be loud. It's going to be crazy, and it's going to be raucous. And I think that's only good for the sport too as well because you have more competition and guys like, oh, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not taking a day off here. I want to show – Yamamoto, what I'm about. I want to show, you know, Glass now. Oh, you came over to LA. Guess what? Doesn't matter where you go. I want to. I want to try and knock you out of the park. So, yeah, your energy levels, your expectations, and um, you know, getting the boys going is just a little bit higher than usual. Thing I'll be interested in watching. Yes, the other teams are gonna quote unquote try their best. Like I don't, I don't necessarily buy that. Like you're gonna try your, you should be trying your best all 162 games, but. That's a whole nother discussion. How is this team going to build themselves up to not be the first round exit again? Like Max Muncy talked about, like I think other guys have kind of hinted at, like maybe this is really good for the season and we can do this for the season. How's this team going to, as a lineup, withstand that first round, you know, getting three wins before the other team gets three wins in a shortened series? That's going to be... To me, that's going to be the interesting thing to watch throughout the season if they make any little tweaks that you can notice that will work in the postseason. Pitching. They better find some pitching. They have pitching for the postseason if those guys are healthy. If they resign, Kurt. Yeah, if they are. Yeah. If, but I mean, I don't think they want Kershaw starting. A but I'm saying they, they thought they were in a good spot last year and it didn't work. Yeah. Right? They thought they were in a good spot 22. It didn't work out. But if the guys that With are their starting on that- rotation. You thought, yeah. but both, but, but, and their bullpen. So like in 22, right. I did the Dodgers Padres series, right. Mm-hmm. Their bullpen got blown out in that series. That's why they lost. I remember I, I told the story, we went into the Dave Roberts office before the game. And he's like, yeah, I want to stay away from this guy and this guy and this guy. And guess who the first guys in the game were for the Dodgers. Those guys, you see, because their starters couldn't get anywhere, but, but that's it, been the, that's been the story of the Dodgers in the postseason. They're starters. They don't use their starters enough, not only in the regular season, but definitely in the postseason. So they get in these long series and they lose because their bullpen gets tired and they can't make the moves that they can make in the regular season by bouncing guys up and down and making, you know, ILs and options and this and that. I mean, it's just a different animal. And if you're not built, you can build a team however you want to build it and have the best depth, which the Dodgers clearly do. But when you get into those five and seven game series and you don't get those off days and you don't get as many moves to be able to make it catches up with you and it's done this year after year after year with the Dodgers see I disagree I think they just have to hit they have to hit I know in the long series I agree I agree with what you're saying in the long series they just you know it's like uh, we're just gonna go right to the bullpen which some of their starters are kind of like bulk guys five innings here five innings there so they're gonna have the same type of issues this team should just Bang. And I don't know many teams that have come through the season just smashing and go to the playoffs and keep smashing. Like they have to have that, you know, the thing that comes to my mind is the Astros. Low strikeouts, high walks. And I think the Dodgers have that lineup, but they have to be able to do that once they get to once they get to the postseason. Or Maybe it's an advantage to be a wild card team, and that's why the Phillies are just keeping their <laughs> well, team together. And they're like, you know yeah. what? The yeah. Braves can keep winning their division. The Dodgers can keep winning their division. We're cool. Most teams lately that make it far are wild card teams. But here's here's the thing. Love it. How many teams can just smash their way through the playoffs? There hasn't been one. You got to have some pitching. You have to have starting. They pitching. do have pitching. You, okay, the team. Uh, I'll say this, and I will die on this sword. The team with the best starting pitching wins almost every time. 
But their talent. In every series you want to find. But what what don't you like? The the talent in the rotation okay, is there. Fine, You're just worried but, about the innings. But they but don't, they don't let them go deep enough at times. They don't let them go. Oh, Rich Hill the one year was throwing like a no hitter, and Dave Roberts like. Second time through, whatever. Nope, you're out, and then they, they got smacked, right? Because because then it caught up to them. They won a World Series based on that against. They, they, true, but they the won race. a World Series in a shortened year, which is what you know. Listen, they still won it. Okay, don't don't get me wrong. Yeah, they still won it, but but they didn't win it where their bullpen had been taxed for 162 games plus a long postseason, and all their guys had been taxed. Right, it was 60 Correct. games, and then boom, we jumped into the bubble. They were piggybacking starters. Remember, Arias exactly. was big later in the game. Exactly. So that to me. Listen, they still won it. I'm not saying there should be an asterisk or any of that stuff. Nope. I'm saying they still won it. Yeah. It's just a different animal when you have to go 162 and then start this five, seven, seven game series. That's a lot of taxing on not only your starters that don't go deep, but then your bullpen. And like we talked about, Yamamoto might need a six man rotation. They got to find another starter somewhere. I mean, they don't. The, the young I mean, they guys have some young guys, in. but are they going to yeah. count on all young guys? For the regular season, you can. That's the thing. The regular season okay, is very then different. Okay, let's say they get to the postseason. No. Well, no, they're not starting in the postseason. They're hoping – what is their starting rotation? Their dream starting rotation in the postseason right now, Kratz, is Yamamoto. Glass now. Glass now. Bueller. Bueller. That's it. That's really That's, your one, two, three, and then everything Bueller's, else is fun. They're going to bring them back on which one on short rest? So you want a fourth? Mm-hmm. Who do you want for the fourth out of that group? I love Miller. Miller. I love I Miller. I love Miller. Yeah, okay, Bobby my Miller, question. Yeah. Okay, Bueller's going to be on a pitch count, innings count this year. I mean, yeah, but starting yeah. him late helps because then... true. But still, it's going to be what 100 innings. So you're going to just boom, 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 and hope you time it right for the postseason. Yes. Okay, yeah. Yamamoto. He's going to be on a innings count. Is he? No. Yes. 100%. Glasnow has you know never pitched more than 130 innings. I think we said. Yeah. All so, right. So here, I have a new idea. Time will tell. Todd, we start the season May 15th for the Dodgers. They can forfeit the first 45, and then they'll win the rest. No, I'm kidding. But <laughs> I get what they're saying. It's just for me, I think certain teams are taking the quality over quantity approach. The Dodgers are like, we, we got this down. We know how to win the regular season. We need to win the postseason. And so we're going to get high upside arms. And even if half of them are hurt, if we have five and three of them are good to go, we're going to be yeah. in better shape than we were this past season when it was a broken Kershaw and a bunch of young dudes who didn't know where they were. Mm -hmm. he, here's what AJ's saying in a nutshell. You need your starters to go longer. And without an anchor of that staff, you're never giving your bullpen that one out of every five, one out of every six days essentially off and not getting burned out because it just adds up July, August. It's... It's part of the reason guys get traded and they go to a new team and all of a sudden they excel because with the other team, if they're worth being traded for, they're getting used every other day. Whether they're in the game or they're getting dry humped, they're getting used. So this team and every team needs to figure it out how they can't just say, okay, look at what the Cubs did. Oh, you know, let's go. Right to a lot, Alizale. Let's go right to you know the next guy. Let's go right to our three guys. Oh, next day, one one run game. Okay, next guy. All build up on top of the fact that your starters don't go long. That's why the Dodgers need somebody to step up and be their seven inning guy. Their Corbin Burns, their Garrett Cole, their you know Blake Snell's not not anywhere yet. So it's 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 that it's that aspect that they need to be able to have success later on. Yep, that's fair. And obviously, people in the chat, they like Sheehan, so do I. Dustin May is going to come back at some point this season. Okay, but he's oh, a lot of I forgot about Dustin May. Yeah, yeah Dustin I mean, May will come, come back. back. I know. Hey, well, let's get that's to our like next Bueller. guest. You're like, oh, Walker Bueller's coming back. It's been he like is two coming years. back. I know, but it's been like two yeah, years. Tommy John. All right, well, we got a dude yeah, that's healthy and just got traded. He's joining us right now on FT Live, the flamethrower, D.L. Hall, joining us, the big prize on the other side of the Corbin Burns trade, now a new member of the Milwaukee Brewers. DL, appreciate the time, man. Great to have you on. And take us through the play-by-play -play of your life on Thursday night. Um, so I was actually headed over to – or thanks for having me, first of all. I was uh, I was headed over to um, my uncle's house. We were uh, actually cooking dinner to get ready to go on a little family fishing trip the next day. And um, I got the call from Mike. Uh he FaceTimed me to tell me and I was actually in the car um, with some family and I was like, I'll call him right back. And then I got a text from him that said, uh, hey, reach out to me ASAP. And once I got that text, I, I kind of had a feeling that uh, something had went down. Um, and then he, he broke the news to me. 
um, kind of spent the whole night just kind of uh, trying to uh, come to the realization that uh, I, I was getting ready to head to uh, Arizona instead of Florida. So it was pretty crazy. It took a little while to settle in. Did you get any fish that day or did you cancel the fishing trip? Uh, no, I, so I was thinking about canceling so I could, uh, you know, start preparing to go to Arizona and stuff. And my family, my uncle, and he was like, no, nah, just come, you know, it'll be good. Clear your head, whatever. My agent said the same thing. He's like, no, nah, go enjoy it. So uh, I was actually like out of service the entire next day. Um, and I know I just had people calling me and calling me. So it was kind of, it was kind of stressful, but, uh, I enjoyed it as best I could and caught a few fish. <laughs> nice. Are you in a duck blind right now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I'm actually out at my uh, farmhouse, um, and it's actually still under construction, so I, I'm, I'm out here right now. Uh, it looks like you're in a duck with the particle board. It looks like you might be in a duck blind. I'm waiting for you to pop up with your 12 gauge and start firing rounds. <laughs> I, I, I wish I, I wish I was. I wish I was. <laughs> See, there you go. I like it. <laughs> Speak nice. of the yeah. devil, right on, right on cue. Look how good we are. <laughs> now, if you grow your beard like that, then we've got some action. <laughs> And it's the old duck dynasty. <laughs> yeah, for real. <laughs> hey, first off, congratulations. Ten weeks. Uh, you've been you're engaged now, right? Yes, sir. Uh, about uh, two months. Two months ago. That's awesome, man. Congratulations. Let the let the significant other take care of everything else. You just worry about baseball, man. There's a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of crap that she's gonna be like. You want to do this? You're like yes. And then there's a lot of indecision. So take your time with everything and enjoy baseball <laughs> for the moment. Yeah, um, I, I, I told her to. I told her to uh, take the reins on that, and I, I just say yes, ma'am. That's <laughs> that's a smart man right there. You already know. Now you get to go back to starting pitching here. It seems like it's something that you've always wanted to do. How are you going to prepare now? You know, off season's pretty much done with. How are you going to? Is you going to prepare any differently, or just going to go about your business? Understanding maybe in spring training, I'll have to let it go a little little longer than usual. Um, you know, I, I kind of prepared uh, this entire off season to be a starter um, because I was, uh, you know, planning on at least uh, competing in spring uh, with Baltimore, uh, trying to get in that rotation as well. Um, didn't really know how, you know, that was going to shake out, but I, I've been training uh, this off season to be a starter and trying to get stretched out and um, uh, doing a little more cardio than I probably would have being in the bullpen. Um, so I, I've kind of been preparing for it and uh, I feel ready. Which which one do you prefer? You prefer starting? I'm assuming you prefer starting over relieving. Um, it it's a hard thing for me. Uh, for me, I I, I uh being in the bullpen, I, I kind of learned that it it was uh for the mental side, um, being in the bullpen, it fit me pretty well. Um, I like to go in there, you know, and just just get after it. Um, so it was a little bit more, you know, of an adrenaline rush, and uh, you know, you got to play a little bit more chess as a starter. Um, so I, I enjoy doing that as well. Um, don't really have a preference. Uh, I just enjoy pitching in the big leagues. <laughs> How, okay, so you're, I was looking at your career totals. Your highest innings ever is 94. It was back in the Sally League uh, in, in, what, 2018, okay? So you haven't pitched, you know, it's mostly been around 40 to 50 innings the last few years. Well, they baby them. In the I minus. understand that. So, okay, let's say you're a starter at the major league level. Brewers come to you and say, you made the team. Congratulations. Can you pitch 150 innings this year? Yeah, I mean, you know, I'd like to say that I can. I, I, I feel like I've prepared myself um, for whatever workload, you know, that they put on me this year. Um, I've worked my tail off this offseason to get back into starter shape and, uh, you know, be able to cover those innings and, and stay healthy. So, you know, hopefully, you know, that works out. But, yeah, whatever workload um, that they hand to me, uh, I, I feel ready. Good stuff there. Um Talk about Joey Ortiz. He got traded with you. It kind of makes it a little easier for you. Have you guys talked about the whole situation about being traded and what the next steps are, how awesome this is going to be, or like, oh, man, what are we what are we up for? You got any buddies over there? Talk to us about, you know, what the conversations were with Joey. Yeah, uh, so, I, so I didn't know, you know, the deal, the, what the exact deal was when I first spoke to our uh, G, the GM over, you know, with the Orioles. Um, he just told me it was a big trade, and then uh, so I waited about an hour um, and found out that it was uh, Joey going with me, and uh, obviously I was super excited. I've played uh, two, the past two years with Joey, um, 
you know, super, you know, I would say he's honestly one of the more overlooked guys that we had. You know, obviously Gunner's a great player. Jackson Holiday's a great player. Um, but Joey is, you know, an unbelievable player, unbelievable glove, uh, probably one of the, my most favorite uh, guys that I've had play behind me. Um, he's an outstanding defender and uh, also can really swing it. So I was excited to uh, be having him, you know, have him going with me. Uh, definitely made me a lot more comfortable. We were excited, um, you know, to be going together. So we talked about it a good bit. In your young career, you might think about getting traded and all that stuff. You, you never know that if it's actually going to happen or not. Are you kind of glad that you got traded to a team that won the NL Central last year and not to some Bobo Cellar Dweller team? Yeah, so I uh... – I, I didn't uh, keep up with Milwaukee much uh, before this. Um, so I didn't have a, a ton of – I don't know a ton of guys over there. I played against uh, Garrett Mitchell, you know, some in, uh, in some of the All-American game stuff in high school. And then uh, I played against Bryce Terang coming up a pretty good bit. Me and him have talked a good bit when we play against each other in the minor leagues. Um, so I know him pretty well. But other than that, I, I don't really know many guys or didn't know much about it. Um, obviously, I know they – They've won like I think five of the seven, uh, five of the last seven years. They've won their division, um, so that's super exciting. You know, it, it definitely helps to know that I'm going to a another young, uh, another young squad that has some talent and, uh, and and can play ball. Has the manager called you yet? Because if you don't know the name of the manager, then <laughs> that would be my first question. But has he called you? And what do you think of him? Yeah, yeah. They, uh, I got to speak with. Uh, with Murph and with, um, with the pitching coach as well. And, um, you know, they, they, they did a, uh, a great job in, in making me feel, you know, welcome and, uh, you know, just making me feel comfortable with the whole situation and, and, uh, definitely made me excited. When you talk to the manager and you talk to a new organization, I'm always curious about this because I was obviously a catcher, not a pitcher. What changes? So when they call you and they say, okay, we're expecting you, to be compete for a starting rotation job in spring training. Do they say, Hey, we want to modify your workouts. We want to modify your pitching plan. Or do you just go with the pitching plan that you've been using throughout your career so far? Um, for me, it was, uh, you know, they, they, when they called me, they, they asked me what I had been, you know, how my training had been going, uh, what I was kind of preparing for, uh, you know, where I was at in that training, uh, situation. And, and uh, luckily, you know, like I said, I, I was preparing to be a starter. Um, you know, they want me to be a starter. So I feel like it wasn't too big of a, uh, you know, task to try. You know, I didn't have to really change my routine or anything. I kind of could just keep doing what I was doing and uh, going to head out to Phoenix a little bit early um, so that I can kind of get my feet wet, get comfortable and, uh, you know, see what they got for me. How are you going to – because a knock against you, yes, you throw – a billion miles an hour. How are you going to go from relieving to starting, cutting down your walks? Do you think that's something that will help? Or do you feel like when you're in the bullpen, you said you just kind of went out there and you were just getting after it, kind of hell bent on, you know, throwing the ball over the plate. Now, do you think how, how as a starter, will it change your command and how can you improve it? Um, For me, I feel like you know, coming up through the minor leagues, uh, when I was starting, I feel like I battled a lot of uh, a lot of the walks and and things that I battled in the minor leagues seemed to come from me trying to find that happy medium of you know being able to uh, save myself you know for for six or seven innings and uh, obviously not blow out early in games and uh, kind of made me a little bit more passive than uh, than I should be. Um, and kind of lose that competitive edge because you're kind of thinking about, you know, all right, I need to, you know, I need to cover innings. And then you end up, you know, doing the opposite and you're walking guys and, and you're costing yourself more pitches because you're not as aggressive. Um, so for me, and I told our my former pitching coach this, uh, when I went to the bullpen, I feel like it really helped me even on the starting side just to get that, you know, aggressiveness back and not really have to overthink, um, just get the aggressive side back of just going right at guys. And so I think bringing that back into starting will be a huge thing for me. Uh, that way, you know, just not overthinking, not, not trying to think about getting into the six, seven, eight, just going right at guys and let it take care of itself. 
Let me ask you this. Are you, or well, are you? No, you're going to be there in spring training. Is there somebody you're going to look forward to seeing uh, on the Brewers that, you know, you might want to take a note or two from? Or are you just ready to rock over? Like, have you talked to any other guys? No, I, I talked to Terrain. He was the, uh, like I said, he was one of the only guys that I really knew over there. Um, so I, I spoke with him a little bit, uh, but honestly don't really know a whole lot about any of the other guys at all. Hey, DL, I know you're tight with a lot of the young Orioles that obviously you came up in the minor leagues with, and then, you know, many of you in, in the major leagues. And so you leave some of them. Do you at least take some, uh, comfort and happiness in the fact that some of your friends are probably going to get rich quicker because of the changing of the guard there. I mean, obviously there's a new super billionaire that's going to take over the Orioles. That deal looks all but done. It has to get approved. But, you know, I remember when we had Adam Frazier on, for example, and we've had many of your, your teammates and he's like, Hey, we heard when, when ownership said they weren't going to re-sign the young players. So that's all out the window now. Yeah, it's definitely exciting for those guys. You know, I, I, Basically, you know, from 18 years old to now, uh, you know, I've been with those guys and, um, you know, a lot of great talent over there, especially all those young guys, uh, you know, some incredible baseball players. So, um, yeah, to see that for them is obviously huge. You know, I'm excited for each and every one of those guys. Uh, they're still, you know, very close friends of mine, obviously. And, uh, yeah, definitely super excited to see them get a chance at, uh, t to make some money. Is it bittersweet because the team was kind of coming up now and just really hit its stride making the playoffs this past season and winning over 100 games? Is it bittersweet for you, or are you kind of already more focused on getting yourself back in rotation with a team that's coming off a division title? Um, for me, you know, with the first 24 hours, I felt like, uh, you know, it was definitely bittersweet to think about leaving all my guys and, and uh, you know, what, what they've built over there. Um, but once I, uh, you know, got past that, you know, I, I'm super excited. I know that, uh, like you said, Milwaukee won their division. Um, they got some really good ball players. So I'm just looking forward to, uh, to, to competing and, and uh, you know, give it my best shot wherever I'm at. Last one from me and I think from all of us. So give us one name on the O's that we need to keep an eye on. Obviously, don't don't give me like a Jackson Holiday, but give me someone else because there's so many prospects there. Who's a guy that you were watching on the bigs or um, making their way through double A AA or triple A that we should keep an eye on? So I actually got this same question earlier today um, on a radio talk show. And obviously, the farm system over there is uh, – you know, super loaded. They have a lot of young guys coming up that are really good ball players. Um, but I stuck. I'm gonna stick with my answer earlier. I feel like uh, I feel like they're not with the Orioles anymore. But uh, I feel like one that was definitely overlooked is Joey Ortiz. Um, you know, I, he's still a top 100 prospect and things like that. But you know, obviously Jackson Holiday and Gunner are, are, are two outstanding players, and and uh, so kind of blocking Joey a little bit. And uh, so I'm just excited to see him play every day and, and uh, get get the chance to watch him show everyone what he's really capable of at the big league level. Is this going to be known as the D.L. Hall trade or the Joey Ortiz trade? <laughs> um, I, I think both of us have a, a, a great chance to uh, stamp you gotta our name. Got to choose. Got to choose. <laughs> <laughs> well I, I hope that we both have a ton of success but i hope that my name is uh definitely remembered for sure nice i, I like answer. that good answer. Uh, we'll, we'll finish with this on the goodbye uh, uh john in the chat said don't have to worry about weather issues in milwaukee with that retractable roof crats you can tell them it's pretty nice it's real nice yeah that was that was the first thing that i uh that i thought of when i heard milwaukee uh, i'm from south georgia so we don't get too much cold weather down here so I immediately thought about the weather and uh, and then found out they had a retractable roof and that made me feel a lot better. <laughs> Dude, doesn't mess with you, especially for you as a starter. Like when you're home, never going to have to worry, oh man, are we going to start on time? I mean, you know, that matters for your routine. Yeah, no, it definitely does. I like that. Well, DL, we appreciate the time, man. Thanks for swinging by right after the deal. Congratulations on the new world you're about to enter in Arizona um, with the Milwaukee Brewers in spring training. And we'll talk to you down the road, all right? Thank you, guys. I appreciate you having me. Thank you. DL Hall of the Milwaukee Brewers with us on FT Live. It's a good point there to finish it up. You don't have to worry about all the weather BS in the it's Northeast. One of the great things, people used to make fun of the Metrodome when we were in Minnesota, but we knew we were playing. 
that was a big deal because people came in from like, – well, Milwaukee's the same way. People come from, in from all over Wisconsin, and you know you're going to play, you know you're going to be on time. That's a, That was a big deal. Number one complaint from me by far in baseball. Every stadium doesn't have a roof? By far. like And, and going forward, too, every stadium – Preferably should have a retractable roof, but obviously at least a roof. Like Nashville's going to have a new ball club at some point, probably like 2032 or something like that, right? They have to have, I don't even know what the weather's like, like if they deal with rain that much, but it doesn't matter. Any city has to have a retractable. Todd Father knows, <coughs> dude, I go to way too much Mets and Yanks. It freaking pisses me off. There's so many games where it's like, oh, we don't know. And we're delayed for an hour and a half. It's so annoying. I understand, but that, that takes the... A little bit out of baseball. That's why, you know, people play the game. You know, not many people like playing in the cold, man. I didn't mind it. Like, it's something a little different. I don't know. I like I like the different weather kind of things, per se, but I do like retractable roofs. But we'll see what happens. I think everybody eventually will have it. But I do like getting out there in 35, 40-degree weather and see Strong survive that game. I love it. <laughs> but... Uh, no, on the no, player side, it's seventy-five and sunny. Well, yeah, well, yeah. real. I, I mean, know you're real. real. <laughs> I don't care. I mean, I mean listen. I, yeah, I mean, obviously, it doesn't, it doesn't bother outside. me. It doesn't bother yeah, me I mean, though. But baseball was meant to be played a certain way, right? With dry surface and this and that. And listen, I mean, it's meant to play in the summer. That's why one of the biggest complaints from fans too: the World Series goes into November now. Yeah, They're like it's too cold in some of these places, and I get it. I mean, a November game in New York or Philly. I mean, remember how shitty the weather was in Philly a couple years ago in the World Series? Yes. Missed a game on Halloween, all that stuff. I mean, I have yeah. a buddy who who makes money, and he was taking his uh, two nephews to a game, and it was one of those Yankee playoff games. Remember the one where they had him sitting for like three hours, and then they they banged it. He was like, "I'm never going to a game again." He was so fucking mad, and he was like, "You know, that's not his top sport." And he's like, "I'm taking my nephews. We got great seats. Blah blah blah. He's got to be up." at work it's five six in the morning and he's there it's like midnight and they didn't even get a pitch and they're like oh uh no refunds but come back tomorrow afternoon at one o'clock and he's like okay i have a job <laughs> so i i feel that for the for the fans that sucks yeah that stinks so, for the fans but when, it, when yeah. a team from the south got to come up and play in jersey in the cold weather nothing better than that <laughs> good luck i will say this from a business perspective the milwaukee brewers are able to get a lot of group sales because that guarantees that they're mm. able to have the game. You know, it's like, oh, we're going to do a company outing. They don't have to go, oh, shit. I don't know if it's going to happen tonight. True. You still have, that helps. You still have elements in Milwaukee, too. We had a rain delay one time. Yeah, there's we had a rain delay because they couldn't leaked. shut the roof. They couldn't yeah. get it closed in time. We had bugs. <laughs> like, it's not it's not climate controlled. I think, I think we're go gone are the days where you can't afford a roof. Like, build the stadium, get the retractable roof, mm -hmm. especially on the East Coast. You, you don't need it to be heated and cooled like yes, like in do. Miami or something like that yeah, where you, you need that. Just yeah, when, you, when no, you got a hockey spinning. mat, it's cold. People don't mind that. It's indoors. It's nice. It's, it's a little shivery. It's all good. If you're, if you're spending money on a roof, you can put a climate control system in there. Yes. I'm, it's, it's, I'm, I'm, uh, trying, I'm trying to cut cost. I'm trying to well, cut cost. Well, it doesn't matter. They already got the uh, city to pay for all the fixes from Milwaukee. <laughs> yeah. And then the players pay their taxes because the city <laughs> recoups it somehow. <laughs> you might as well just get it from the players direct, right? Correct. Hey, guys, we're going to take a little percentage of your money to fix the roof here, okay? Um, anyway, we're going to uh, bring in our next guest in just a sec, Carter Holton, and do a little college conversation. Did you know, by the way, Baseball America just came out with their college baseball rankings? Mm -hmm. Do you know that. who number one is? Wake Forest. How'd you know? Because I follow it. Okay. So we're about to bring on a Vandy baseball Vandy's player. Vandy's like six, aren't they? Vandy is – so it's one. It's Wake, LSU, uh, Arkansas, Florida, Oregon State, TCU. Vandy's seven. Yeah, seven. Okay. As long TCU's. as they're by Florida. TCU. I did a TCU game last year, and those boys, they have some, they have some peeps on that team. Kirk Sarlus is the coach. For TCU? Mm-hmm. Sarlus. You ever seen his hands, by the way? He's got little tiny hands. No. Clark's, yeah, it was amazing. He was a sinker ball guy, and he had little tiny hands. X. Major leaguer? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. X, yeah. Oakland Athletic. Yeah. Wow. Oh, he's great. Pitch Out of Fullerton. Cal State Fullerton. Yeah. Huh. Back in the glory days. Uh -huh. All right, let's bring in Carter Holton right now. Our uh, interview powered by Tiza. 
Tiza Energy, and we'll show you the promo code at the back end too. Love the shirt here from Carter, who's got his own Tiza pouch, which we'll get to in a sec too. So Carter, you heard us talking about those rankings. Uh, what do you think? I mean, they're they're great, great to be up there in the in the top ten, but obviously there's a lot of things that have to happen throughout the season for us to remain there at the end of the year. What do you got, AJ? I don't know if you can see this. As long as you're behind these guys, Carter, you guys stay right That's where you're at. Okay? Carter, talk trash, dude. Don't let them don't let them do you like that. <laughs> it's all right. We'll let the play and do it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a better place in the world to go to college than uh, Vanderbilt? I mean, seriously, you're in you're in the heart of Nashville. You're basically on Music Row. Your your I'm, campus is. I mean, the stadium is literally. I mean, the football stadium, and the baseball stadium are touching each other. Uh, is there a better place in the world to go to college than Vandy? I mean, I might be a little bit biased, but I don't think so. And with the the years to come, what they have planned for all of the athletic facilities is it's going to be an even better place to come. Yeah, I like that. Hey, we got the college dorm action going. I was going to say, right his now. dorm room looks like your house, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he didn't put. He's got the lights. You see the lights kind of behind him to the left, right? Those yeah. dorm lights. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> let me. Hey, let me ask you this, dude. You came up to Rutgers this year. I don't. Do you remember what happened? I do remember what happened. Oh, hey, that might have been the, one of the biggest wins Rutgers ever had. It wasn't a win. It doesn't count. But for us. Playing against a team your caliber, winning sixteen to six, I think it was, was pretty impressive. So I'm I'm looking for big things from Rutgers. That's all. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're a great team, great program, and uh, they'll do big things this year for sure. Appreciate it. And how how did how'd you feel coming up to Jersey over there? I know you guys went and saw uh, New York City, and um, you know the lights are where the Twin Towers were. So tell us about that experience. You know, Tim Corbin took you and the team. To kind of, it's like a bonding trip a little bit, taking in New York City and then playing a couple scrimmages. Talk to us about that. Yeah, I mean that was great. We got to take everybody from the team there. I mean we we did everything together. We got to see a bunch of stuff, and for including myself, it was a bunch of our first times up there. So just being able to experience history in in the USA, and then being able to go over to Jersey and play Rutgers, even though I don't really care for the weather up there, but it, it was a great <laughs> experience all around. No doubt. No, not, not many people do, unfortunately. <laughs> Who do you compare yourself to? We just had, I, I watched some of your film on, you know, from last year. Who do you compare yourself to in the big leagues right now? Because we actually just had a guest on that I think your mechanics are very similar. He's a little bit more linear. You kind of fall off a little bit. But who do you compare yourself to that's in the big leagues right now? Yeah, I mean, I don't, there's not one person that I, I compare my myself to, but I really like watching Max Fried pitch and just his pitch type and his pitch ability and the competitiveness that he has. I, I like to go after his style of play whenever I'm out there on the mound. You got the like, big curveball like him? It's not as sharp, but I do have a pretty big curveball. You're a Braves? Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming you're a Braves fan. I am born in and Georgia. raised in Georgia. Yeah, born and remember, raised. You remember watching me for those couple of years? Oh, <laughs> it was a long time ago. Stop. You're it. like, you're, you know, you were like 12. It was painful. 15, 15 and 16, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Those good years. The good years of the break. He knows. That was good. At least he knew, yeah. Yeah, right. exactly. Sure. <laughs> Let me guess. I didn't sign your ball like Rowdy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. I think uh, – I remember Jason Hayward giving us a, a ball after the – I think I was eight. First game, Jason Hayward gave us a ball. That's that's my best memory going to the Braves games, at least at the old stadium. Okay. Yeah. Jason Hayward was gone before I got there. We weren't, we didn't have anybody. Well, I guess we had Freddie. Yeah, Freddie. We had Freddie. Thank God we had Freddie. He was the only one that really made it through and then went to the winning side. No. Yeah. Well, when I mean, they were good, Albies obviously, and Swanson until and those left. guys came up at the end. Yeah. Yeah. On the back end. But the back end. Yeah. 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 But are, are you prepared eventually to ditch your Braves fandom if you don't end up with the Braves when you eventually get drafted? Yeah, of course. I mean, I'll always have a, a spot in my heart for the Braves, but I know how the game of baseball is and I'll take any opportunity that comes my way. Like, are you, wait, are you draft eligible this year? I am. Ah, uh, okay. So who's going to go higher, you or Jack? <laughs> All these Florida questions. Well, I mean, <laughs> I'm I taking know. him. I'm taking him all day. Huh? All okay. Day. All right. I, I want to hear his answer. I, I, like I said earlier, the play and will tell. Oh, wow. yeah. oh, okay. Right. When, you wait, you guys field. play. Hold on. Do you guys play in Florida or in, or in Nashville? We'll play in Nashville this year. 
Oh, okay. Scott oh, might have what? to make a road trip up there. <laughs> me? Yeah, with me. Oh, I'll go with you. Okay. Who's who's Vandy's top rival at the moment in baseball? Like, who's uh, the team I'm, that I'm, Vandy hates the most? Tennessee. Tennessee. Oh, yeah. Easy. <laughs> Tennessee. Okay. So those are the games that the fans get the rowdiest for and all that. Obviously, it's in the freaking state, too. Yeah, I mean, it's just there's always been a robbery there in every sport. And, I mean, it's always great competition. So the fans really get – get up and get loud for those those series for sure yeah tennessee dude big time yeah so he's like gators whatever we'll, we'll see them at some point it's all good <laughs> checking out some highlights here They're i good. like it do you, Go ahead, Carter, do you look do you look down on the other sec schools because of how astute and scholarly people from vanderbilt are <laughs> not at all i mean every sec you school you should i would up. yeah i would too <laughs> No, you should look down on them, just like you should look down on the people who, on the people who have jerseys from teams they didn't play for with their names on the back of them. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> he, he, he said no. He didn't I, say love, no. I love it. Hey, I you love play, it. You play. You were a perfect game ten, dude. Talk to us about perfect game and how that kind of shaped you a little bit playing against some of the best competition in the world, man. Did that? kind of get you going in the right direction of where you wanted to be in baseball yeah especially for like coming into travel ball I, was, I mean it was just really getting getting to be big whenever I was coming up through 14 to to 17 and that really helped just getting exposed and being able to play against the great competition and then I mean the team that I played for too team elite there there was a ton of loaded loaded talent on that team so just they made me better and then the competition that we played against made me better all right, so a lot of guys that get drafted and play in the big leagues or are in the minor leagues are finally out from underneath Tim Corbin. Can you give us a Tim Corbin story while you're still there? Because, like, a lot of guys, you know, they flaunt it, they say it with their chest once once they're <laughs> gone, but, like, they have a lot, of, a lot of Tim Corbin stories. So do you have one? I think to save myself, I will wait until I am gone. Okay, but you have some. So can we, can we plan on – if you're drafted – can we plan on having you back on to have a Tim Corbin story? Yeah, for sure. Okay, that's fair. There's like not that. even a PG one right now. That's yeah, fun. one that like brings a good light. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm not gonna share any of his stories from. <laughs> All right. Well, then let's uh, talk about the recruiting process. You're a Georgia guy getting recruited. Tim Corbin, did he come and see you? Was it the pitching coach? How how did that how did that come about? And were you like Dang, I know I'm a perfect game ten, but Tim Corbin's coming to see me. This this guy's the real deal. Yeah, so I mean, I were I, I really talked back and forth with Coach Brown, the pitching coach, most of the most of the recruiting process. And then as I got up to Nashville and came to Nashville a couple of times, I got to sit and talk with Corbs and just figure out how how he thought about things and from a different perspective because he's he's more of like an infielder hitting guy where everything that I kind of talked to to Brownie about was about pitching, but the recruiting process was great. I mean, they were very transparent. I talked to coach Baxter too throughout it. So it was great just getting to know all of them and, and f figure out the ways that they had here at the program and how I would fit in. All right. So at Vandy, do they still have the locker room with all the alumni where they get their own lockers like David Price and Sonny Gray and all those guys? They do. So have you met any of those guys? Have you met any of the alumni? Do they come around that often and, once you're drafted this year, do you get a locker automatically or do you have to make the big leagues? How does it work? Yeah, so most of the guys do get a locker like as, as soon as they're drafted. But uh, as far as how often they're here, they're here all the time, especially in the offseason. Right now is a very hot time for – I mean, I watch Sonny Gray throw bullpens. I get to talk to a lot of the big league guys that are in the weight room in the mornings, just lifting at the same times that we're lifting and just picking their brains and, and being a sponge for all the knowledge and experiences that they've had over their years of playing college and in the major leagues hey john wants to know if you ever got to meet spencer jones <laughs> i got to play with spencer jones oh so there you go so give us the scouting report because yankee fans are all amped up about him and the yanks have made a lot of trades over the last few years right because they keep working on the big league club including this past or this off season where they acquire juan soto but spencer's not part of that looks like they're keeping him so what are they going to get yeah, I mean, they're making the right decision by keeping him. I 100% think that that kid will be in the big leagues within the next five years, if not sooner. But he's a he's a great player. He works very hard. And, 
I don't know that I've ever seen somebody that big that can move like he does. He he can run. He can really, really run down the line and in the outfield tracking the balls. I mean, he saved – he probably saved four home runs for me by robbing them in right field my freshman year when he was here. But, I mean, he can he can swing it too. He's also the first person that I ever saw. Every time he was 3-0, Coach Corbin would give him the green light. And most of the time it was it was a good outcome. <laughs> I like that. What's he like personality-wise? He's the he's the nicest human you will ever meet. I mean, he's very laid back and he's usually down to do anything. He just like he would always hang out with the guys. He liked to set stuff up. Like he he's just a, he's a good leader inside the clubhouse, but outside of the clubhouse, he's a great human being as well. Hey, what do you do? What do you guys do in Nashville for fun? What, what's the what's the thing you guys do the most when you're in Nashville? Besides, yeah. and keep it PG. Besides Broadway. <laughs> Well, Broadway has a lot of attractions other than bars. You can go down there and see a lot of the cool stuff. I mean, the Country Music Hall of Fame's down there. But my my favorite thing that I didn't really get to experience when I was in Georgia is the, the Preds games are <clears throat> really fun. I, I never really watched hockey, but going and just watching watching hockey and trying to learn more about it. But it's it's really fun when they just get in fights and you get to watch that and the, the <laughs> fans get all rowdy about it. Hey, do you get free tickets? Did you buy Not them? free, not free. Okay, I was going to say, recruiting violation. I'm calling the NCAA right now. <laughs> you tried to catch me. You didn't. And I am. Nothing matters anymore. Oh, that's okay. true. There's no rules. That's yeah, right. yeah. It doesn't matter. <laughs> um, Carter, I have a couple fan questions slash comments. So, Champa Bay said, is that annoying Vandy Whistler dude still there at every game? You'll have to fill me in. Is there a dude that just whistles his ass off? Yeah, there's a guy that whistles. There's actually two of them, but uh, – there's one that's, I mean, there's probably, you've probably seen videos of people going up to him, trying to get in fights with him because he's whistling and making everybody else <laughs> mad. But I mean, when you're on the field, you, you can, you hear it, but you can, you can get used to it and kind of tune it out. It's like a white noise eventually. Yeah. <laughs> you just hear the whistling. Um, and then you also had a comment here from William saying it's almost impossible to get bandy tickets. Is that true? Is it the hottest ticket? And is it difficult for people to get to go to a Vandy baseball game? I mean, I think that you can you can pretty much find the tickets on Ticketmaster. I'm not sure how they're probably transitioning a little bit with uh, how they're doing the tickets. But you can you can look up I, whenever I was coming to games before I was getting recruited. I would just find them on Ticketmaster and buy them. Um, it is it is probably tough, especially if you have to travel a, a long distance. But you should be able to find them online. Which, depending on the game, I know like the Tennessee series, that's usually hard to get tickets, especially close up to the series. But long time in advance, you can get tickets, and that's a great series to come to. And then most of the other series, you can you can definitely find tickets to them. You guys have one of the premier programs. Tons of money into the program. Tons of eyeballs watching. How can we, as a group, as a sport, baseball, sell college baseball more? To we'll never hit NCAA football. I get that. How can we get it to the you know the younger fan base where it's like, hey, we got to be able to sell Vandy playing Tennessee. It's a huge rivalry that we're that we're not seeing. And you know, I think we need this for baseball. So how can we get that done? Or what what would be some good ideas that you would see since you're in it right now? You're in that rivalry. You're in the SEC. Yeah, I mean, the, the attractions that come along with the games, like the little extra things that, that the fans get to be involved in is, is definitely key. Like I mentioned earlier, the, the renovations that they have in, in line for the baseball facility will definitely bring more fans. I know that they're supposed to be adding like where the, the big wall is and, and left field. They're supposed to be adding seats up there with like a little bar area. So that'll definitely add to some of the attractions. And like one of the things that we do, I, I know a lot of other schools do it too, is every Sunday they let after the game, they let the kids run the bases. So that right there brings a lot of attraction from the younger groups and, and their families. And then, I mean, they like watching winning baseball. So first impression is everything. Whenever they do get a chance to come to a game, the first impression is everything. So how you make them feel as, as the team is playing is, yeah. is everything to if they want to come back or not. Hey, let's finish with this. So we know the shirt that you've got. And do you have a, a Carter Holton special? A uh, <laughs> little teaser pack that is running around the Vandy area. What else can you tell us about your relationship with obviously one of our favorite brand partners too? Yeah, it's been great so far. And I, I hope it continues to go like this. But I mean, being able to try all of the the flavors of the stuff before I was picking mine. Yeah, there you go right there. Woo! The tropical, the tropical oh. is my favorite. Um, 
but it's got a little bit of caffeine in it, B vitamins, and it's it's a good little energy pouch. And then all of the team loves them. So I, all the cans that I got, I've kind of just distributed to my teammates and family, uh -huh. friends, whoever wants to try them. But I highly recommend it, and I don't think they'll disappoint. Tropical uh, is the best. Tropical yeah, is the best. You are exactly favorite. right. I completely agree. Uh, well, so – I want to make sure this part's clear too for anyone that's just learning about Tiza for the first time. No nicotine, no tobacco. So I'm I'm sure growing up you came around people that you know had had dip as a part of their lives. So how important is it to have brand alternatives like this that are obviously significantly healthier? Yeah, I mean it's great. Like one of the the thing like when my mom sees that can, you know, she she doesn't think that it doesn't have tobacco or nicotine in it, but uh, like the the back of the can if you look at it it says everything that's in it but it's just it's a very healthy option in my opinion i'm, I'm sure teaser thinks the same thing that's why they they made it but it's a very healthy option of just a little energy pouch that can really replace people that like dip or tobacco like it can replace it and i think it's a way to to get some people off of those things i like that did you ever think that you'd have your uh, face and name and all that on a product when you're you know how old are you 21 21. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I never imagined that that happening, but when they reached <laughs> out, I was very grateful for the opportunity, but it's, it's really cool just to have my own little product and be able to get those sold and, and show them off to other people. I like it. Well, we're rooting for you this season, man. Uh, we'll no, have to get I our mean, hands we're on one for of you every time, except for against a certain team. No, that's uh, you. Go personally. out there and kick ass, man. You yeah, got exactly. yeah, I hope you have a great year. Kick UF's ass, kick Rucker's ass, do, whoa, do it all. Whoa, whoa. Oh, so you know, you're, you're trying to get taught in. I like Rucker's too, but I just, I'm rooting for Carter I'm right now. I'm rooting for him He's too. That's it, show. So every, except for one that's game. That's the one game that th those guys can lose. Okay. We got to talk, Scott. After. Yeah, we will. We will. I'm not coming back up for a while. It's too cold for me. But <laughs> Carter, thanks for joining us, man. Appreciate it. Good luck this season. We'll be watching. All right. Thank you, guys. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, obviously, big part of the uh, Vandy rotation there. Carter Holton joining us and use the discount code FOUL, F-O-U-L, for 20% off your first order at TizaEnergy.com. Okay, so first off, just to let everyone know, if you're just tuning in, we spoke at length about the Bobby Witt Jr. extension. If you backtrack, wait till you get to the end because we still got like 20 minutes left in the show. But if you backtrack to earlier on in the show, we got a good 20 minute chunk on the Bobby Witt Jr. extension. We're going to get to it again coming up in a sec. But first, we do have a little problem. And this is a different problem because usually it's a problem for Todd Father. But Todd Father, someone's coming in to see you. They have their own problem, okay? And they're going to need some advice versus you having a problem and needing to solve it. So I need your best kind of seniority mentorship for a friend of ours who actually just recently joined us on the show. So first off, let's see what we got running here. What's the problem? All right, so All right. why don't we run the, the quote for you Other from the manager of the New York Yankees, Aaron Boone, who was recently on the show giving us the lowdown on what the uh, Soto Judge 2-3 pop in the lineup is going to look like. The problem is you got to make contact with that baseball, which might be a little tougher on one of those days when Corbin Burns is lining up for the Baltimore Orioles. He said that could be a bit of a problem, which you know kind of plays exactly to what we do here on FT. So. Booney's sitting in your office. What are you yeah. doing about it? And remember, it's still the off season. You can still do things to add to your roster. Sure. First thing I would say, hey, we don't speak out loud, okay? We keep things to ourselves. So that's one thing I would tell them. I'd say, listen, if we do have a problem, let's keep it hush and let's work within the system to make it better or find somebody else. But yeah, it it's a problem for sure. It's uh, The Orioles are getting better. They've gotten a lot better with that acquisition of Corbin Burns. And at least he's honest about it because – I said it last week. Uh, I'll say it again. You know, Garrett Cole and Corbin Burns, they might be battling out for a Cy Young now. I mean, he's that good. So, and the other thing, we don't know how Carlos Rodon is going to be this year. It's that unknown. So there's Nestor Cortez is another one. Both were injured, kind of, and they're making their way on their comeback trail. What we've heard is they're having a good offseason, whatever that means. I'm not a, I'm not big into knowing somebody had a good offseason. I want to see how they throw in spring training and get after it. But, yes. It definitely is a problem for the AL East. 
and the Orioles are coming once again. The Orioles are coming. They won 101 last year. They already came. They're there now. They're, yeah, they're, they're there, now. but they didn't really do much with it. They're there, though. Yeah, they did more than the Yankees did, that's for sure. That's true. That's true. I mean, it's also, it, I will say this. The, what, top a top three closer in the game in Felix Bautista mm-hmm. is lost. True. You're not going to have him for at Can, least most will of the Kenobi season. Will Kenobi as good all. as he was last year? Will Kenobi as good? I still think they could add a bullpen arm. They should. They could. They need to. If, if they could find the right one, whether trade or free agency, it'd be nice for them to add one more bullpen arm just as backup. I know Kimbrell's possibly a Hall of Famer, but there's some shakiness in Craig. As much as everyone, I mean, I love Craig, but there's still some shakiness in there. But, you know, can Cano do it again? He had never really done what he did until last year. Um, and some of their other guys, too, I think need to take a, take another step. So we'll see. But, yeah, I mean, I love their starting rotation. I love their lineup, obviously. And whew, this puts them kind of back at the top, I think, of the AL East again. Yeah. I mean, they, they won it last year. Didn't they kind of add a bullpen arm in signing Corbin Burns? You know, you you establish somebody that's going to throw you 200 innings. We talk about 200 innings like it is the like unreachable plateau, and you bring in a guy that does this instead of bringing in a starter that they were going to pay for you know one you know one year seven to nine million dollar deal. They're bringing in a guy that's going to throw you that seventh and possibly eighth inning instead of the fifth, possibly sixth inning. So. Burnsy kind of kind of does that, and I think I think Cano is really going to be the the game changer here for this team in that bullpen. He's not a strikeout guy, so where does that put you? You can't really slide him into the bullpen into the closer role because you need to get a guy back there that can punch dudes out. He does better with clean innings. Yes, he can roll up a ground ball double play, but you got to play the odds that he's not going to punch out guys, especially when he's not punching out more than. One guy per inning. Let me ask you guys this. Who, who would you say has the better bullpen right now? Oh, Yankees. Okay. And you do you think that the Orioles with Burns have the better starting rotation, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm yeah. the, so there's For me, be, yes. If you ask me to – Who has a better lineup? I'll take the Orioles, one through nine. Hmm. Yeah, but there's some, there's uh. some big – there's some big gaps, like the difference in the number three hitter for the Yankees and the difference in the number three hitter for the Orioles. It, there's a even though even though yeah. the two and three for each team could all be all stars. There's a there's a significant gap in Gunnar Henderson and Juan Soto and Adley Rutschman and Aaron Judge. And Santander was their three hitter for a good chunk of the season. I mean, he's a good player. I like him a lot. Really but great. trying to comp him to a Soto or a Judge, no. Right. So there's there's more of a year. top top high end. But if you asked if you asked me two years ago, who would have a better rotation? I mean, who was the biggest who was the biggest name out there on the market starting pitching wise? Carlos Rodon. Yankees got him. Yeah. He I think the Yankees go on how he does. And that's saying a lot to say Garrett Cole has to be a Cy Young. Winner Cy Young candidate again, but to me this ro- that rotation really hinges on that, and the Orioles just have a better one-two punch with consistency and guaranteed, not guaranteed. I can't say guaranteed, but the consistency at that top with Grayson Rodriguez being the one that's kind of that. Okay, if Grayson Rodriguez does good, then the Orioles are a nasty one-two-three. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're good. John Means, he's pretty good too. Yeah, really good. Coming off of Tommy John too, no hitter in his and, career. And Kramer wasn't bad for him either. So yeah. great. Tyler Wells five. is pretty good too. I mean, he's probably going to be in the bullpen, I guess, to start the season. Mm-hmm. But I mean, he had some good times. Remember, he got optioned in late July. He had a three one eight with in in eighteen starts. He, he was starting to tire a little bit, right? And they gave him a little bit of a mm-hmm. reset. But man, he's pretty good too. Deep. There's a lot of talent there. The, the, the difference for me, Todd Father, is the Yanks are, are top heavy. They've been top heavy the last few years. Like a lot of relying on Judge and Cole. Now you'll say that with Judge and Soto. I mean, Judge and Soto are better right now hitters than anybody on the Orioles. I think that's pretty easy to say. But the Orioles have so much depth. Like even if you know half of these young dudes don't end up being stars. There's so many of them. That's why they had to make trades. Like they have a log jam. I mean, 
DL Hall was just on the show with us. He's talking about Joey Ortiz, who is capable of being a starting player in Major League Baseball. I mean, mm-hmm. he doesn't have a spot at all. And he's 25 years old. It's not like he's 21. It's like, oh, you know, we can let him marinate in the minor leagues for a little bit. Yeah, no. He's ready. He can hit in the in the minors. Like, he has shown he's ready to play. He definitely has the glove ready to go already. And the Orioles are like, we literally have no spot for this guy. Not only do we have no spot now, but then there's three or four more infield position players coming up. So forget it, you know? So it makes the trade easy for them. But that's the difference for me is the Yanks don't have the same depth. Who's going to be healthy? How's the starting pitching going to be? And who's going to come to play? Because with the Yankees, some guys kind of fizzled off at the end there as well. So we, you need a guy like Rizzo to step up to anchor that middle of the order. You need Giancarlo to step up to be that four or five hitter, wherever you want to put him. Um, yeah, is Volpe going to come back? And, and, you know, at the end of the year, he did pretty well. But is he going to be as consistent as possible? The what ifs. And we know the Orioles have done it. So. It's one of those things where who's going to step up? This is only good for baseball. So the AL East is going to be alive and well. Um, you know, what the Blue Jays, I mean, we're thinking the Rays are always going to be in it. So it's going to be a fun, fun year. I can't wait to see and see who else makes some more acquisitions. So that's um, still got some time left. This is two playoff teams. Don't, don't get it twisted. Both these guys are going to be in the playoffs. It's just a matter of in what position. True. Well, well everyone thought the Yankees would be in the playoffs last year. Yeah. yeah. I'll take – I'll still take the over. Yeah, better team this year. Uh, agree, but I'm just Older saying. team, though. That's the thing. Old, they keep getting old older team. and older. They're an old team. The Orioles are super young. And Stanton that... stay healthy. That's the key for me. Yeah? If he can stay healthy, him and Rodon, those are the two. Yep. Those Rizzo's, two Rizzo's the key for me. I like that. Lefty he's a pretty stick. consistent player. Yeah. Lefty stick. He's going to probably hit behind Judge, and he's going to continue to. He's just going to give that lineup length in the sense of, okay, we pitched around Judge, or we got Judge out because Judge will strike out. Then it's going to go to Rizzo. If Rizzo hits 300 like he was hitting before his concussion or mm-hmm. his collision with Tatis, he all of a sudden. I'm not saying you pitch to Judge. I'm saying it lengthens that lineup. He ha- he puts together great at bats. I see him getting 100 stakes this year, especially with those two dudes in front of him. And I know Judge is going to take a lot of his RBIs, but with Rizzo hitting behind those guys, I think it's going to, as long as they go left, right, left, I think it's going to really be conducive for Rizzo to, you know, put together some at-bats where he's just getting his RBIs. He's just driving a single to the left center gap for two stakes. Yep. doesn't You don't need the big one for him. Just just find a way of getting it done. Let's get to the headliner story of the day. We're swinging back to Bobby Witt Jr. and his extension with the Kansas City Royals. And we'll do some BetMGM World Series odds because Kansas City was terrible last year <laughs> at baseball. I mean, they were competing with the A's for worst team in the league. They were at plus 20,000 to win the World Series at the start of the season. And we would have said, please no. And then by midseason, obviously, the season was already over for them. They were 26 and 65 on July 10th. Mm-hmm. 19 and a half games did back. better in the second half. They were better in the second half. As many of those kind of but teams But they got are. Reagans. Cole Reagans is their best arm by far yeah. right and now. And Bobby Witt figured some stuff out. Yep. Um, yeah, they're they're they they got some they got pieces. They got some yeah, good pieces. They're plus fifteen thousand this year to win the World Series. I wouldn't Series. put money on them. Anyone want to put a hundo down for the Royals to win the World Series this year? Uh, I'll take a hundred out of Kratz's money. Okay, <laughs> that's fair. You can have yeah, I got a couple <laughs> extra hundreds. Yeah, not, not for me yet. Where's their where's their you said you said this year? This is the team they're gonna have for the next three years. Like they signed some of these guys, like this is the type of team. Yes, I get it. They had Hunter Renfro on you know a one year deal, and they put together. But what what is in their minor league system to come up and be like, okay, mm. this is you know it's a weird like the Orioles are building around their their youth. What what are the Royals building around? Bobby Witt Jr. A new stadium. Mm-hmm. What yeah. what are we building around? Yeah, I mean, there's some nice young players. We like MJ Melendez, I think. And a piece. he's a piece. a piece. Yeah. Michael Massey has shown some flashes. Michael Garcia, they like. 
Yeah, he's a platoon. Michael Garcia, they like, they think there's some potential there. He, he showed some flashes last year. Uh, I mean. Vinny Pasquatino is. Yeah, they, I they, love they Vinny have, P. You know, I like that bat. It's one of those things like they have Bobby Witt Jr. from the system. They got some thing, they, I think they have some other kids coming. They got some pitching coming from what I remember when we talked to JJ Piccolo. He said they, I thought they, they said they had some pitchers coming, but that's why, I mean, you go out and you get a Walker, you go out and you get a Seth Lugo. Right to to pair with some other guys, teach some of these young guys the way. I mean, Kratz, you were there in fourteen and fifteen. They went out and got James Shields, right? He was kind of the missing piece to to those young guys that they had with Wade Davis and and some of those other guys, Holland, and you know some of the guys they had. So I mean, it, it's it, it's just about mis- mixing and matching. But I, I like what the listen. At least we can say this about the Royals, and we haven't been able to say it in about ten years. They're trying. Yes. Right. Yep. So at least they're trying. I'll give that then over some other teams. They're trying. They're and, much better roster than last year. A hundred percent. My God, they, they could not roster. pitch for shit last year. And it I was talk, so frustrating to watch Royals games. I talked them. to I talked to one of the guys that works with the team. He's not a coach. He's not. He just he works with the team, and he said they had no veterans. They had no veterans in that clubhouse besides Salvi that could teach these guys what to do, and that is a is a huge, huge role in a team. And I think they addressed that. I think they addressed that and some with the guys that they brought in. So if they have those young guys that are going to step in, MJ Melendez, those guys, maybe maybe this is the chance. Maybe I'll put down a dollar to win 150. Hey, that's not a bad move. <laughs> I, hey, you want to you wanna say there's some sneaky playoffness to it? That's the real place to look at. Look at the that's- division. Okay, because let's say the twins have a disaster year. They had one a few years ago where like all their dudes fell apart and they've got they've got a lot of talent on that team. But there's a lot of injury injury history with with most of their players, more so than most, especially younger players. Right. Like Royce Lewis, all the upside in the world. Unfortunately, he's dealt with a lot of injuries. Right. Buxton, we've hit on many times. Buxton, of course. Correa, he'll be the first person to tell you that. Kepler. Kepler, yeah. there's a bunch, Kirilov, a bunch of those well, guys. Well, let's actually, we'll hop into them. Let me let me just give you the uh, the info here on, on BetMGM, and let's hop into the Twins because they just made a signing. So place your first BetMGM Sportsbook wager through the app of at least 5 bucks. You'll receive $158 instantly in additional winnings regardless of your wager's outcome. You do that when you download the app. Uh, for the first time, you sign up and deposit at least 5 bucks into your newly created account. Place a wager in the amount of at least 5 bucks at standard odds price. And then once you place that bet, you'll receive $158 in bonus bets regardless of the outcome of your wager. Gambling problem or concern? Call 1-800-GAMBLING. All right, so let's spend a few minutes on the signings that we didn't get to. And let's start with the Minnesota Twins. Because did you see what they did this weekend? They, they promised and, they were and- going to use the money that they saved on the Jorge Polanco deal and spend it and they did very quickly with carlos santana like kratzy mentioned so santana signs a one-year contract he's 37 years old they saved six and a half million dollars from the jorge polanco deal they spent just about all of it just now on santana who we had heard connections with the brewers at one point earlier this offseason who obviously signed reese hoskins but it's one year five million bucks and at this point in his career and knowing how the twins operate he's probably going to platoon a lot against left-handed pitching because the on-base percentage for him is still excellent against left-handed pitching. So that's what you'll see from him. You don't want him probably as a full-time everyday guy, although he's been durable. But Yeah, my question is where, where is he going to play, though? Cause it, First base and DH. Over uh, not only Kirilov, who's the other guy? Uh, well, Kirilov is who he'll but who's, They have the other guy, too. Um, gosh, the other, the other left I'll get guy. the – Depth chart up for you. Uh, I mean, he well, he, it was Solano last year, yeah, but he's and then gone. they put Polanco at first at one point, right? And Polanco's gone, so didn't I Julian, think they're gonna didn't Julian place him first, and no, then that he's big he's a second baseman guy, okay. And then the big the big donkey that hit the lefty that came up and was hitting some dingers, That's not Kirilov, the other one, yeah, no, no, yeah, yeah. Mm. Well, Miranda's gonna come back this year, but he can play some, he, he's, he's third, third base. base, he was he's third base. base. Yeah. yeah, but then Lewis is probably going to play third base. Royce Lewis is your third, third baseman. Base. Correa is your shortstop. Julian's oh, your second baseman. He's yeah. a big donkey. He's hitting balls yeah. in the, the third. Le- yeah, not, that's what I'm saying. It's not Kirilov. It's the other one. They have another guy, big giant guy. Okay. Lefty. But he, Are you looking at their depth chart? Yeah, on first base, it's Kirilov, Miranda, Farmer, Julian, and Junior Severino. What about what about oh. outfield? outfield? I think he might have is... DH'd more. 
But Santana fits right into this. Santana, when he came over to the to the Brewers, the Brewers strikeout rate went it went down by for the two months that he was there, it went down by almost two strikeouts a game. Now it was like one of the worst in the league, but maybe he can bring this Larnick. to the lineup. Larnick. Yeah. What was his name? Larnick. Trevor Larnick is the Yeah, Larnick. Larnick. I didn't know that's who you're talking about. And then they cool have Walner too. too. There's a lot. And there's also more coming too. Brooks Lee mm-hmm. is a dude that went, I think, eight overall a couple of years a ago. Guy, though? He's a middle infielder. He's a middle infielder guy. But that's that's why the Polanco trade was easy for them in their minds. Because they felt like they already have a log jam. I mean, you can make the case they didn't need Carlos Santana. Yeah. But, but you had some depth there. Yeah, but he it's brings all that back. Bats, sure. That's why. Do we think they have the best bullpen? Do we do we have yes. that tweet? We could show it at some point. Can do I they say have the best in the bullpen game? in the American League? I mean, Fangraphs projects them as the best bullpen in the American League with Duran at the back end. Yeah, Brock Stewart, Griffin Jacks, Justin Topa, who they just acquired from Seattle. There it is. Our friend Aaron Gleeman, who joins the show sometimes. And there's Caleb Thielbar, Kratz's buddy. They just signed Jay Jackson, and that's a major league deal. So you would mm-hmm. imagine that he's going to make the team and there's still more. So I will they say got this. Some dudes. They got, some, they got dudes. some dudes in that bullpen. They bring, They're the heavy favorites to win the division. Of course they got dude. Yeah. They got a lot of dudes. Their star, I was still, uh, their starters still scare me a little bit, but their bullpen is stacked. Their lineup is stacked too. If healthy. Thunderbird yeah. is nasty when he's right. They so just I mean, strike out too much. Their lineup strikes out too much for me, but it worked last year. But that's why I think that's where I think, the door is open, but their bullpen is so deep, and they bring funk from every angle, and the velocity is just – it's suffocating. You know how it is playing in the division, guys. Like, you play in that division, and you're like, okay, we got a two-run lead. It's fine. Oh, man, they're bringing in field bar. Like, he's pumping 96 with that curveball from the left side. Like, that's that's a slow – that's a slow slow thrower in that pen. <laughs> You know, Johan is bringing the noise at as a closing, throwing that splitter. What, he, what did he throw a splitter at, like 101? It's a splinker. <laughs> uh, like, they, I think they're the best bullpen in the game right now. But you said they're voted as American League? Who would be the best? Well, Fangraphs the calls them the best in the American League. I don't know. I, I'd have to look at what they said for National League. I mean, I don't know who else is in Braves? There. The only Braves one I have can a think really of good off bullpen. the top of my head is the Astros bullpen, though. Yeah, but that's with Hader, Abreu, and Presley is pretty damn good. That's I pretty really good, like but the these Braves guys bullpen. Have, these guys are like six deep. You talk about like burning your bullpen out. Like these guys are six deep going into the end of this end of the postseason. There, <laughs> you can use any three on any given day. And they okay. have a horse. They have a horse in Pablo Lopez, who yeah has that guy. He's the solidifying when everyone else is going to maybe go five or six. Yeah. He's the only one I feel really good about, though. That's the thing. Their rotation mm-hmm. is not, to me, that sexy for the playoffs. No. Ober. What are they going to do with Joe Ryan. Ryan? Joe Ryan. Joe Ryan. Remember Joe Ryan? Joe Ryan didn't even want to pitch him in the playoffs last year. It was, yeah. It was a literally like, who's going to pitch? Who's going to start this game? Because they went Gray, Lopez, and they, they Ober, I think, started. Like two and, innings. Not yeah, even well, they were only – before the game, they said uh, – Rocco's like, he gets nine hitters, and that's and it. One time, and they didn't even reach nine hitters. He got nine hitters, and that was it. He, you know, I think he got nine. He, he did exactly one time. He got time nine, and he, then, whoop, he's out. Well, Took the, the under. Yeah, the, the thing with Joe, I mean, apparently he's been still tinkering with the secondary stuff, trying to figure out what to pair with the fastball, and yeah. so you're seeing some of this trial and error get played out. Um, I will say the Braves, Rysel Iglesias, A.J. Minter, Joe Jimenez, Aaron Bummer, Tyler Matzek, who's now back, Reynaldo Lopez, if he doesn't end up being a starter. Uh, remember Yanoa? Who was pretty good. Yeah. He's back. And and Ray Kerr, who had a great little run with the Padres. Pierce Johnson, who you know I really liked when he came over, and obviously he shoved for them right off the jump. Dude, it's it's a That's really a good bullpen. bullpen. That's a really good looking bullpen in my mind. Billy's bullpen's good too. Billy bullpen's good. All right, so let's get to the White Sox bullpen before we slap hands because I want to get to those moves too. So <laughs> Bob Nightingale talking us through a busy day for the White Sox with a couple trades. Um, none involving Dylan Cease. So they acquired Dominic Fletcher from the Diamondbacks for Christian Mena and Send. Here's the big part, the name that maybe some people know if they've seen him in the bigs. Gregory Santos goes to the Mariners. And he's had some elbow issues, but he's got five years of control. The dude I've seen touch 103, and he can locate it. 
And in return, they're getting Prelander, Baroa, Zach Deloach, and the 69th pick, Giggity, in the draft. So, did you see Gregory Santos this past mm-hmm. season? He was good closer. He's their best reliever. He was. But, well, they had Bummer, who they got five guys for. Right. Now they but, got three guys for him. I mean, listen, Chris Getz is trying to revamp the roster. I, yeah. give, him, I give him a ton of credit. Now, is he getting guys that can help you win a World Series? Maybe. But, I mean, who's their right fielder right now? Dominic Fletcher or Gavin Sheet or uh, what was the Oscar Cola? Right? These are all moves that are like, okay, they're just gathering depth and trying to figure it out. But they need Colson Montgomery. They need Schultz, the lefty, to come up and be stars for them if they're going to ever get back to competing. But these are nice moves by Chris Getz. They're getting rid of some of their value guys. 69th pick. I know we, I know how much you love draft pick trades. Scott, but I do. I mean, listen. <laughs> I mean, listen. If Perlander, Baroa, and Zach Deloach turn out to be big league players, it's a win for the White Sox. Gregory Santos, though, is probably going to be a stud, and the Mariners have been able to develop. Yeah, relievers. I mean, he's got a great arm. He does. I, I think arm. there's some injury concerns but there. Listen, sell high on him. Yeah. Because what's he going to close for you, the White Sox? Twenty-five games for you, right? I mean, come on. Let's let's be realistic I, this year. I, I got to look back, Todd Father. That might be one of my spots. I got to look at the win loss because right. <laughs> their bullpen is going to be atrocious. And when you're a bad team, if you have a bad bullpen, that's where you get the hundred loss teams. That's your hundred loss locks. Now they added John Brebby and Tim Hill. That's like the the veteran depth there. But that's it. Yeah, but Tim Hill had like a five year. Last I know year. that stuff wise, there's not much in that bullpen right now. You guys ever play chess? Yes. No. The White Sox, everyone else, <laughs> everyone else is moving moving their key pieces around. The White Sox just keep moving their pawns. They're like one space up, one space. They move their knight, you know, they'll move their knight out and then they'll put their knight back. Like, what are we doing? The Royals, like, you can make moves. You can make moves better than this. Come on, Jerry. Get off your wallet. <laughs> I think they're quietly rebuilding. They're 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 doing it, yes. Yeah. They're doing depth right now. Yes. And, and last thing I'll say, and we'll get to it more tomorrow if we get the money eventually, is Phil Maton, who is a pretty good reliever on the mm-hmm. free agent market who gets scooped up by the Rays. The Rays don't do this very often. So if they do it, they usually think like there's oh, another level to unlock. Remember, they signed Zach Eflin, which they never do. And that was one of the biggest deals they've ever signed. Zach Eflin had a career year. Mm-hmm. He was really freaking good last year. So. Put some money on on Phil Maton having a good season Eflin this coming year if he's on. healthy. Eflin wouldn't come on though. What? Okay, then I hate him. No, oh, at the golf tournament. At oh, Wicks tournament. oh, he him was and, focused. Him, we're gonna get him in Port Charlotte. It was a practice day. Him and him and uh, Deekman were sitting at the bar having coffee. I'm like, hey, you guys want to come on? They said we no. don't do that stuff. I'm like, okay. What? Zach? No. Are we? Gonna- uh, I promise. Uh, ask uh, the guys, the interns over there with me. You know why? Michael's I think I know why. He, why. I got my thousands hit off Eflin, and he's still mad about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he remembers that. Yeah, I'm totally I'm, remembers that. It probably had a video montage and everything. They were like, "Stop the game, give him the ball." Thank yeah, you. He, he's still mad. If, if he knew, uh, got to do it when I'm not on the show. He's scared. Okay, he's fair. scared. We'll tell him that you retired. You're not in the league anymore. He can relax. All right. <laughs> not giving away any trade secrets. All right. We'll try to get him in Port Charlotte. Let's slap hands. Mm. Maybe the most random collage of players in the slap hands. <laughs> Should we redo the collage? Do you want it? I mean, a lot of those guys aren't even on those teams anymore. Oh, well, then we'll redo it. Claudia, you're being called out. We're going to redo the slap hands collage. Claudia did a great. Pictures. Cartoon collage. When the season restarts. When the season restarts. Oh, okay. okay. You got to give people something to look forward to for the season. Yeah. I mean, we got the Nats, the Royals in there. I mean, we, it's like, we got the studs. Yeah. Okay. Because we don't talk about those teams as much since they're kind of quiet lately. So no, we got them we in the, the picture. A's and the Rockies in there. We really got a <laughs> problem. <laughs> All right. We got, we got two things in slap hands. So number one, Joey Votto was at the NHL All-Star Game, and he was having a, a freaking time. And apparently Gritty big-leagued him, and then Gritty was trying to be like, oh, dude, what did he say? Where like, you at? Oh, where, where are you? What did he say? Sit. Where are you? Sit. Where are you sitting? Where are you sitting? And, and Votto freaking just laid him out and posted it and said, you had your chance. I'll never forgive you. Go Penguins. <laughs> Ooh, that's <laughs> That's tough. real. 
Always, always a Philly person screwing up. Isn't that something? Jeez, God. <laughs> gritty. <laughs> gritty. What a, what a mascot Gritty is. But easily Jeez. the best sweaters in the game, the Flyers sweaters. Easily. I'll take the Blackhawks for three. No. Come on. Devils, baby. Todd Father Devils all day. Uh, number two, three, Kratz Hats is back. Is this Anybody a South know what African this is? hat? No. Pickle? Jason that Kelsey, is... Jason and Travis Kelsey were just talking about it on their. Is that a watermelon head? Backyard yep. baseball. Backyard baseball melon heads. Mm. This hat is fire, and I would love to see backyard baseball come back. Put that John on your phone. I would agree. Love it. I agree too. I have a whole story I'll tell you off the air about backyard baseball. Wow. I got some inside inside stuff. And then Ooh. lastly, uh, oh, what do we grade that? I'm giving that a A minus because I love backyard baseball. I don't even know what backyard baseball is, but I like <gasps> yeah. You, I, never, I, never, I never played it either. Is that like Sandlot? Well, you guys were playing for real, but the, the losers who couldn't hit a baseball played backyard baseball, Kratz and me. Yep. <laughs> All right. Cool. Sorry we don't have you know a ton of dingers in the show, but <laughs> we do what we can. Um, Ken Rosenthal's Fair Territory is up in Adam, so check it out. He covers the Corbin Burns trade. He covers the Dodger Fest talk that we got into as – the villains now in Major League Baseball, the evil empire, has switched over to L.A. Giants open rotation spot, new dude and dork of the week. Bunch of questions for Ken. Always a gem. It's a must to listen. Okay. And other guests this week, as we're working our way out of here, Jeff Francoeur, Zach Britton, and Buck Showalter all coming up tomorrow. You guys ready for Buck? I can't wait for Buck. Oh, I'm pumped. I'm pumped for Buck. Adam Jones back on the show tomorrow. Later this week, Max Muncy, Quentin Berry, David Stearns, mm. new head honcho of the New York Mets, Josh Hader, maybe a little Bobby Wood Jr. Gosh, action. you could I mean, listen, if we could have got Bobby Wood Jr. today after we had Corbin Burns on the day he got traded, that would be that would have been an epic. Friday was special. Yeah. But before we go, I have to wish it's my son's birthday today. So I have hey. to wish my son 17. Happy birthday today. Nice. Uh hope you have a great day, son. What'd you get him? I can't tell you he hasn't opened it yet. Doesn't matter. He doesn't watch the show. Good point. <laughs> we took him to dinner last night. He's, you know, he'll open his presents tonight. I'll let you know tomorrow what we got him. Do you guys, do, you guys do a cool dinner a, for birthdays? A new car. Uh, he already has that. He already got that. Um, oh. No, we just, he picked where he wanted to go. And we went Which to this is? place. It's, it's, uh, it's this new Chinese place that opened here. It's like a dumpling place. Dumpling. So that's where he wanted to go. He picked it. We let him pick. Dumplings for dinner for your birthday. Let's go. Should All I right. We'll see everyone. I what? Should I wear my 2014 American League Championship ring tomorrow since we're having Jonesy, Britton, and Buck Showwater on? Yes, if, if you were ever going to do it, Tuesday is the time to do it, okay? So, Kratz, do that. I'll wear the FT shirt, and we'll see everyone on Tuesday. What are you going to wear for Frenchie? Eh, teammate. True. Braves jersey. Bye, everybody. See you Tuesday. Congrats, Bobby Witt Jr. You're rich. <laughs>